Good evening. This is a continuation of the Board of Selectmen meeting for Tuesday, July 12th, 2016. Uh, we started with the executive session. We'll continue the public session now, beginning with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Sestari will be joining us in a few minutes. Uh, at 6.45 at this time, I'd invite anyone from the public that would like to address the board to please come forward and do so. There's a microphone here. If anybody's here to address the board and share any ideas about their town government. Seeing no takers, we will move along. Okay, at this time, we have a couple of staff recognitions that we want to uh, take care of. Mr. Kamalo, can you do me a favor, please, and introduce to myself and the board uh, the first of the two? Yes, um, I have the honor and the pleasure to recognize as both Bill Proctor, William Proctor, the town's animal control officer, and Cynthia Proctor, who also serves as the assistant animal control officer. They were both certified. They were both certified by the Massachusetts Department of Agriculture Resources as, as inspectors of animals. And so for the next year, the town will continue to benefit from both Bill and Cynthia's uh, services as the animal control officers for the town. Excellent. Uh, would it be possible for both Bill and Cynthia, or some, one of them anyway, to kind of let us know what they had to do to go through that process? Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately <laughs> both Bill and Cynthia were not able to attend. That's what I was wondering. <laughs> I didn't see them, so. Okay. Well, that's great news. Uh, how does this impact the town? How does it help the town? Um, one, it, it continues to uh, allow the town to access the technical <coughs> assistance from the Department of Agricultural Resources in the event that there is any animal-related uh, issue that we have to escalate to the state level. And number two, it also uh, affords the town the continued support from qualified and experienced and certified animal control officers and number three, for the selectmen, less phone calls to the office. Great. Thank you. Well, we appreciate them getting that certification and uh, look forward to their work here in Hockington. Would it be possible for them to help us with a certain beaver population on Fruit Street? I'm sure Elaine can confirm this. Over the last six months, Bill Proctor has uh, provided technical assistance uh, to Jennifer Beck as we continue to address the beaver issue in town. Excellent. Anybody have any other thoughts on this? I just wanted to take the chance to say thank you to Bill and Cindy for being willing to serve for such a long time because most people don't remember, but we went through, it, it's a tough job, and we went through a time years ago when we had one animal control officer after another. Um, the Humane Society owned the job for a while, and people within the animal shelter <coughs> took their turns. I took my turns being the dog officer when it was my weekend on call, and it was not an easy job. And we're so fortunate that we've had that consistent service because um, it hasn't always been the case. It's a tough job to fill, so thank you, Bill and Cindy. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, great, yeah. Can we uh, make sure that we recognize them in a letter as well uh, for receiving the certification? Okay. The second item, Chief Lee. Chief Lee is going to join us at the microphone and uh, present an officer to us that uh, it's, I think, an uh, unfortunate circumstance that he's retiring, but uh, we can also certainly congratulate him as well. Um, you know, all too often we, we, we have these great um, opportunities in Hopkinton to celebrate our first responders and the wonderful work they do. Uh, elsewhere in the country, we always talk about first responders and the very difficult circumstances they face 
it seems, day in and day out now. Um, so let's keep them in our thoughts as we continue with what we, is a great celebration here this evening. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before I call up uh, Officer Griffin, if I could just expound on your, some of your comments. Absolutely. Uh, uh, obviously, it was a tough week for law enforcement and uh, actually a tough week for everybody in this country. But uh, I just wanted to thank the local community for their outreach, uh, their overwhelming support. Uh, it's, it's been a unbelievable. I mean, we have a great working relationship, the police department yeah. community. You know, it's a, it's a relationship built upon uh, trust. And uh, we work well together in a collaborative effort. And uh, our, low, our low crime stats yeah, prove that. But this week has been, as I said, overwhelming with the amount of gifts that come, came to the police uh, station, cards, people showing up, a lot of food at the station. And uh, it comes as a surprise to you, but I'm a big fan of food. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, 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 I have no comment, Chief Lee. <laughs> <laughs> but what is even uh, better than food, not much, but is when a citizen comes up to you, and I've had the opportunity several times this week where people just come up to you and shake your hand and say thank you for you and your department and thanks for keeping us uh, safe. And most of all, we appreciate what you do. And I'm sure all the men and women of the department would agree with that. That is, it's just, it's a wonderful thing and it's heartfelt and it doesn't get much better than that in this business. Uh, with that said, I'd like to call up uh, Officer Tom Griffin, his wife Chris, if she'd like to come up as well. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked. I can't argue with her. No. Well, uh, first I'd like to point out that Tom has done 40 years of service to the town. Two years as a firefighter until he smartened up and joined the blue team. <laughs> and uh, everybody wanted to recognize Chris as well because she's done 38 years of a police officer's wife, and that's no easy job. Just ask my wife, although probably other reasons why my wife would say that. <laughs> but, um, uh, so Tom has worked several decades, and he is the one of the most dedicated police officers I ever met. As a matter of fact, he doesn't want to leave, he has to leave because of his age. And I won't mention that, but people <laughs> <laughs> But the, the, he's one of a kind. When I first got on, he, uh, he was you know, a great help to me. He was like my FTO, when I came to town, which he is an FTO field training officer. And he drove me around town. He told me the history of the whole town. I mean, he knew it all. I mean, he's seen it all in police work. He's seen over the decades the changing the several different programs, how law enforcement has re reacted to different things. So I'm sure there's not a story, and he has a lot of stories, <laughs> good ones too, that he could expound upon. But, um, one th thing is, is the amount of extra things he does for the police department. And uh, he's going to be impossible to replace. Well, we're doing our best, but we have at least five officers stepping up to take on some of the responsibilities that he handled on his own. Let me just uh, mention a few of them. As I mentioned before, an FTO uh, field training officer. And he's done that for uh, several years. Uh, he took the... Uh, responsibility of being the liaison for the regional jail diversion program that we currently have in town. And uh, he's done an outstanding job with this and uh, worked with our mental health advocate and uh, other towns along with the uh, uh, Department of Mental Health and they have nothing but high praise for him. While he was doing that, he also wanted to take the initiative on the Narcan program and we brought that to town. And Tom was responsible for all the training training all the officers on uh, how to use Narcan, uh, supplying all the vehicles with Narcan, and uh, because of it, he's, he's in, uh, saved lives. Um, he also takes on a, a, a other opportunities, such as a business license inspector, doing that for several years, making sure like limousine services are in compliance. He's done an outstanding job with that. Fleet maintenance, if it wasn't for Tom, we'd be in rough shape when we might be in rough shape if uh, Peter doesn't work out. But he keeps our cars, he keeps our cars on the road rolling, and it is just an, it's such an important position that that, that he has been uh, doing over the years. He is a part of a regional crisis intervention team. Basically, when uh, uh, officers uh, confronted with traumatic situations, he's part of that team. He's been trained. He also represents our police department if there was a crisis 
uh, situation, a traumatic uh, officer involved shooting, anything like that. Tom is trained to go out there and uh, help and support those officers and get them through. So, uh, it just, I, I mean, I could go on the amount of duties, but we don't have a, <laughs> enough time. But let me say a little bit about Tom. He is, uh, let me just say, they broke the mold when they made something like this. He's, he's one tough guy. As a matter of fact, last year, uh, Tom was complaining about a shoulder pain, but you know, still showed up every day for work. You know, obviously he was showing some discomfort, and then finally, when he was egged enough to go to the doctors, he came back with a note, very disappointed. I'm gonna have to miss a few days. Uh, next few days, I broke my shoulder. <laughs> so that's what kind of commitment and toughness he is. Actually, about a month ago, Tom and I responded to an emergent situation, and uh, we had to gain access to the house. And next thing you know. I see a flash go by me, smashing through the door, and boss, it's Tom. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's just the, uh, he has a, he's an, uh, an incredible police officer, and like I say, 38 years, what can you say about that? Unbelievable. Also a fierce uh, uh, negotiator for the union, you can normally can testify to that. <laughs> but we're certainly going to miss him. Uh, we're glad that he's going to stick around as a special so we can still go to him for some advice and, uh, and uh, just to see if you're faced around. And uh, we're going to miss him. I'm going to miss you guys. I won't be gone. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Um, thank you, everybody that's here. Didn't write a speech. Uh, I'm just going to say a few words from the heart, and I'll make it quick. Uh, it's, it's been a great career. I've worked with the best people in the world, the best people in the business. I believe that um, we're the best department around, and you hear that from other departments too. It's been a pleasure to work with everybody on the department, within the boards, and I just want to thank everybody for giving me the opportunity to do that, and for the whole town for putting their trust in me to do this job for all these years. Thank you. Mr. Ted Stone. Well, I have known Griff for 40 years. Um, I, I'm excited to be able to, I could make him squirm up here a little bit, but I won't. Uh, I have some stories too, but I know, it looks I know. you're all set. Touche, touche. So, Good answer. So uh, just a quick one with, with Griff is um, when we were growing up, me, not him, he was well grown up before me. Um, we used, to de we used to base our weekend activities on if Griff was working or if he was not working. <laughs> and um, well, Now we know what type of activities you're talking about. Yeah. So we didn't know if, if we were going to go from the church to the bingo hall, if Griff was working, it would be a direct line. It, we, we wouldn't deviate at all. Um, that has stuck with me to today. I still would be, if I'm coming through town, I'm like, oh, I don't know, Griff might be working. We've got to slow it down a little bit. <laughs> um, Tommy, I've known you for a long time. I've known your kids. Uh, you've been a pleasure to have in town. I've only been a selectman for a couple of months, but I consider you a lifelong friend. The town is much, much uh, worse off having you gone. We're going to miss you terribly, and congratulations. From my heart, thank you very much for everything that you've done. Yeah, I just want to say thank you very much. And what scares me is all my contemporaries are retiring right now. It's just, you know, this is, this is scary. Obi and, and Clark and you and wow. Uh, you know, it's, and, and it's, it's sad to say that, that um, age has to, be, has to be the factor because, uh, you know, you're still young at heart and to know everything. And it's, uh, it's, it's a shame we're losing. Such a, such a great officer, but thank you very much for your time and, and, and good luck in retirement. Thank you. Well, Officer Griffin, I'm, thank you for all that you've done. Uh, you've been a wonderful 
contributing member to the police force. Uh, the only silver lining to the cloud is I see next on the agenda there's something about a special officer appointment, so we may not be losing you entirely. But um, knowing this recognition was happening tonight, and, and particularly in light of the events of the last week, I was thinking a lot about the role of the police and what you all do. And um, there are no words that are better than the words of Jesus, who said, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. So thank you for all that you've done. Thank you. And my pleasure. I, uh, I took a walk the other day. I was at the office and I went down the street to do something. I checked into the HCA there and just said hello to a couple folks. And as I was coming back, Tom was in the cruiser uh, in the entrance to the high school. And uh, I said, how you doing? And we chatted and we ended up chatting for about 10 minutes. I didn't know he was retiring at the time. He told me then that he was retiring. And we had a nice conversation and I really enjoyed it very much. But as I left, obviously we haven't talked about it, I left and walked back to my office the first word that came to my th first thought that came to my mind was dang I mean there goes another great guy in the town of Hopkinton that we have to replace uh, you know so I put the hat on the of the selectman and said okay we have to replace him but I thought to myself how are we gonna find somebody to replace him with yeah. you know 40 years in town serving the community is an unbelievable number uh, and it's great dedication and we were so lucky to have you uh, we'll miss you uh, but to mrs. Wright's point uh, I think we'll see you uh, in some detail here, hopefully pretty soon, and we can wave then and say hello. So thank you for all you've done to Hop for Hopkinton, and best wishes in your retirement. We'll see you out there soon. Thanks, thank Tom. And the good news is there's a lot of great guys right behind me. Yes, great. Yeah. Excellent. Great to find Excellent. Them. You've trained them well, and they'll step up. I do have one business question that I'd like to ask the chief, um, because I think it would be instructive for the community, at least it will be for me, because I'm not clear about the age thing. We actually talked about it that day when you are in the cruiser, but I didn't fully understand it. Can you explain the age thing and why certain people have to retire at a certain point? Is that mass general it's law? It's mass general law, and it's uh, uh, age of 65. Uh, there, there are some uh, areas where I think you can get a, a continuance based on the law, but I don't think that would work out. In <laughs> in your is case, that as far as far as his pension and things of that of that nature? And is that something that's mass general law controlled, or is that Hopkinton bylaw involved as well? Uh, mass general law. Mass general law only. Okay. All right. So we have to follow the law. Unfortunately, every now and then, somebody like that has to retire. So, anyway, well, thank you for that, Chief Tom. Best wishes to you, and we will see you soon out there. Great, Griff. Awesome. When when is your actual last day? 27, you work, you work days? I want to be your last written warning. Who said warning? Yeah, skip the warning part, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Good luck. Thanks, Griff. Okay. Uh, next up, Chief Lee, item number two uh, on your mini agenda here is you would like the Board of Selectmen to consider approving uh, Tom Griffin to be a special officer. Is that correct? That is correct. It would be a privilege to have him still out there in a uh, uniform capacity tra directing traffic. OK. The chair will entertain a motion to support Chief Lee's request that Officer Griffin be appointed a special officer in the town of Hockington. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Does he have a resume we could look Any at? Any debate on his merit? <laughs> Any debate on his merits? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. Okay, great. Thanks, Chief. Next up on the agenda, the consent agenda, we have one item on the consent agenda. It is a parade permit. Uh, and that parade permit is to consider uh, issuing the parade permit for the Hopkinson Firefighters, Hopkinson Firefighters Local 3772 uh, MDA Fill the Boot Drive which is done on an annual basis, um, scheduled for September 17th with a rain date of September 25th. There are no street closings involved. Chair will entertain a motion to approve the request for the parade permit for the Hopkinton Firefighters Local 3772. Motion to approve. Second. 
Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So that was the only consent agenda item, so the consent agenda passes. Okay, Mr. Kamala, we just sort of did it in that particular item and not the consent agenda in general. Yep. Got it? Yep. Is that okay? That's okay. Thank you. Okay, next up, another great opportunity for the town of Hopkinton to celebrate its citizenry. We have two young ladies uh, with the Girl Scouts, who I believe are here and have earned their silver award. And we would ask them and their troop leaders to join us uh, at the podium. And uh, let's do this. Uh, we have Holly Burns and Kate Berry here this evening. Um, why don't we have the young ladies go first, introduce themselves, and explain what it is they did to earn their silver award. And then uh, we'll take it from there with a few questions. And maybe we'll talk about a proclamation at some point, too. So why don't you go first? My name is Kate Berry, and this is Holly Burns. And we're seventh grade cadet Girl Scouts working on our Silver Award project. Both Holly and I felt that there was a lack of CPR and first aid training in our community. So we both decided to put on programs for our community to train people in CPR and first aid. Um, our first two programs uh, happened this June, and we're putting on two more programs later in July. Holly is going to uh, go through the people that helped us through our project. So we would like to thank Hopkinton, Hopkinton Parks and Rec, the Cultural Arts Center, trainer Mrs. Michelle Levinson, Hopkinton Middle School, the Benford family, and the Keep Smiling for Abby program for providing assistance and support towards the success of this program. Without them, we probably wouldn't be able to say we finished. And we had a supporter donate an AED to Hopkinton Parks and Rec um, as a thank you. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you for coming tonight. I, I, I'm sure my colleagues have a couple of questions for you, and I'll start with Mrs. Wright. I don't really have any questions. I just think it's wonderful. I wish that kind of thing had been available when I was, when I was your age and starting babysitting. And I want to say congratulations and thank you. The award is well deserved. Thank you. Mr. Catino. So what's the minimum age of someone that could take your course? So I think the youngest you can be to take the course is 11 years old. And so anywhere from 11 to an adult will have programs for. That's great. So, so um, how was it, uh, how many hours did it, did it take you guys to put this, put it together? It says a minimum of 50. It must have taken more than that. Eight hours total. Okay. Did you feel comfortable teaching it? And, and is it uh, still, still fun? And it's a lot of fun. Um, Mrs. Levinson is the facilitator. She is the trainer that um, teaches the students what to do in case of an emergency and how to be prepared and deal with it calmly. And then what do you do after that? Great, and so just do the, do the people that pass the course get a certificate or something so they could show yes, the they families? Yes, the licensed um, babysitting training is a lifelong uh, license. Uh, the CPR class is renewable every two years to the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. So could, could, could we ask Mr. Kamalo if they could probably post that on the, on the town website sure. or something? Sure. You know, because that might be something good on the Parks and Rec uh, website or something to that effect, because then it would be a great thing to have more students uh, well-trained uh, for babysitting. My goal is to hope that you can have um, camp counselors. It is not recommended that they have to do it from what I heard. So my goal is to encourage those parents to encourage their teachers. 
students to take the courses. Great. Thank you very much. Great job. Thank you. Oh, we're not done yet. Mr. Ted Stone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, congratulations, girls. That's that's a wonderful thing that you're doing. You're continue. You're you're starting into like public service and uh, helping the community and helping people out. And I think that's the whole background of the Girl Scouts. And it's uh, it's wonderful to see kids like you up here doing that. And congratulations. Thank you very much. So let's talk about the Silver Award for a couple minutes, if we could, please. Can you describe what the Silver Award is? what level that is in the scouting process and, and you know, how do you have to work to get to that point? So the Silver Award in Girl Scouts is the highest award that a cadet Girl Scout can earn. There is the Bronze Award, which Kate and I both have earned, and then there's the Silver Award and then there's the Gold Award. You earn the Gold Award when you're an, um, an ambassador? In high school. In high school. Okay. As a senior. and. So the silver award, you have, it has to be sustainable. So that's why we brought it to Har Hawkington Parks and Rats. So, and they agreed to keep it running for years and years. And so has Michelle, Mrs. Michelle. And um, the minimum hours, as you said, is 50 hours and we, all, we did achieve that, so that was one of the requirements for the Silver Award. So. It's awesome you guys did this. I mean, it's a really heady thing that you tackled. It's an important thing. It's a serious thing. I'm sure you had fun doing it and learning along the way, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's impactful, and you should be very proud of yourselves, and uh, I'm sure your parents are, and uh, your troop uh, leaders as well. Uh, we're lucky to have you in town. The kids that are going to learn from you are lucky to have you in town. And uh, we congratulate you for it and look forward to your next award and coming in someday soon and talking about that. So keep it going. Keep it going. One more quick one. Just to not scare, scare people that are going to take the course. Now, the course isn't 50 hours. Well, how long is, is the course? Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get you. Know, there could be some teenagers no, saying, are you no, kidding? The course Thank you very much. I just wanted to clarification. Please. Two other quick thoughts. Uh, one, um, you know, as you grow in your scouting, uh, you're going to grow as people too. And these awards are very uh, meaningful. Uh, they will be very meaningful to you as you get into the college application process. And, you know, you're not thinking about all those things right now, but as somebody who's going through that with lots of kids, uh, those kinds of things are really important. So uh, really I'm proud of you for doing it. And the community is as well, but keep it up because it's going to help you down the road big time. With that, I'm going to ask Mrs. Wright to read a proclamation. We have one for both of you. Uh, and Mrs. Wright will read it and put both names in there so that uh, you can understand uh, what we're doing here. Okay. And then we have to vote the proclamations too. So. And this proclamation says, Town of Hopkinton, the Hopkinton Board of Selectmen hereby recognizes Silver Award recipient Holly Burns and Kate Barry, Girl Scout Troop 72975, Hopkinton, Mass., Girl Scouts of America. Therefore, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Hopkinton, Massachusetts, join with Holly's and Kate's family and friends in recognition of their achievement in attaining the rank of Silver Award, signed under our hand and seal this 12th day of July, 2016, Brian Herr, Chair, Todd Sestari, Brendan Tedstone, John Catino, and Claire Wright. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Great job. So the Chair will entertain a motion to approve the proclamations just read by Mrs. Wright for the two Silver Award uh, recipients. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. 
Okay, ladies, we'll have these for you here in one minute. Mr. Sistari is going to sign it, and then you'll have your official document, and we can do a quick picture out front, too, if that would be okay. Okay, so we're going to do a picture with the young ladies. In your work just expanded his pool of candidates for EMT positions. Maybe I better give them the frames. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Put them in the frames themselves because yeah. I'm not going to wrestle with this right now. Thank you. Lots of love, lots of smile. Look at those people, they look great. Thank you. Okay, great. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just in time, Todd got to sign it. So perfect. Thank you so much. Next up, item five, we have a board resignation. The Board of Selectmen has received notice of Darlene's Haynes, Darlene Hayes' res resignation from the Library Board of Trustees. And, we'll and it could very easily have continued on the way it was before, and nobody would be, you know, displeased with it, per se. Uh, but Mr. Kamala noticed this and came up with this idea, and it's uh, definitely benefited the town and all the organizations. And uh, and, and the people who benefit from those organizations directly. So I'd like to thank Mr. Kamal. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, thank you, Mr. Kamal. Let's go ahead and tackle item number eight on our agenda. It's a street acceptance. The Board of Selectmen will consider voting pursuant to Article 47 of the May 2nd, 2016 Annual Town Meeting to execute orders of taking of the following private ways. Connolly Hill Road, Valleywood Road, formerly Valleywood Drive, Carol Ann Drive, Cary Lane, and Nancy Lane, together with easements for drainage, utility, and other purposes. So we just need to formalize at the Board of Selectmen level what the town meeting decided on May 2nd, 2016. Mr. Kamal, do you have anything to add to that? Do we have a motions document for this particular transaction? Yes, we, we have a motion that will allow the Board of Selectmen to um, accept the, to approve the orders of takings for the roads that we approved at town meeting and the roads are listed uh, in the agenda as well as the meeting packet. Okay. Can you pull up that motion so we get it right? Yes, in one second. And if you could read that motion, then if one of the members would move uh, the motion, if you're so inclined, to the, based on Mr. Kamala's. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote pursuant to Article 47 of the May 2nd, 2016 Annual Town Meeting to execute orders of taking of the following private ways. Connelly Hill Road, Valleywood Road, formerly Valleywood Drive, Carol N. Drive, Kerry Lane, and Nancy Lane, together with the easements for drainage, utility, and other purposes. So moved, Mr. Chair. Okay, we have a motion on the table from Mr. Sestari. Is there a second? Second. We have a second, Mr. Catino. Mr. Kamal, Mr. Kamal, I assume that that motion is in order with uh, Mr. Mieres as well? 
Yes, that is correct. Our town council. Okay. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. Thank you, Mr. Kamalo, for giving us the motion. Item number nine. Uh, the Board of Selectmen will consider approving a street name pursuant to a request from Mr. Gassett, Mr. Brian Gassett of Summit Realty Trust for the Haynes Farm Subdivision. Did I pronounce that correctly, Haynes? Uh, at 25 Ash Street. The suggested names in order of preference are Parker Lane, Haynes Farm Way, Center Avenue, and Bedford Lane. Mr. Kamal. The requested street names were circulated to the relevant town departments, including public safety. I would share with the board up front that number one, Parker Lane, uh, was not supported by the local permitting departments as well as public safety. And therefore, the choice for the board is now um, names suggested as number two, three, and four. Okay, so everybody okay with scratching number one off their list? So by process of elimination, we're going to work down here a little bit. Okay, so uh, has the uh, applicant been notified that Parker Lane has been dismissed from the list? The comments from the permitting as well as public safety departments were shared with the applicant. And we didn't hear anything back? We have not had any comments okay. back. Yeah. All right, so uh, we have three other names before us. Um, Sometimes namings can go very quickly. Sometimes they won't, or they don't. Uh, who wants to start? Mr. Katina, Mr. Testone, do you have any thoughts on the various names? Well, if, the, if it went through the police and fire and DPW, um, and the only problem they had was Parker Lane, and the names yeah. were suggested in the order of preference, I'm good for uh, Haynes Farm Way. Mr. Katino. Concur. Concur. Mrs. Ray. Yeah, I, I think Haynes Farm Way is most appropriate. I always like street names to somehow harken back to the history of the property. And Brandon and Connie Hain were long, long time residents of that land and uh, uh, contributors to the town. Um, I personally don't recognize any significance with the other two names, Center or Bedford. So I, I would definitely. Uh, support Haynes Farm Way in recognition of the longtime landowners, Brandon and Connie Hain. Mr. Sister. I'm good with Haynes. I agree 100% with Mrs. Wright. I think whenever we can tie a name to the history of Hockington, it keeps us uh, grounded in our past and we celebrate at the same time. So uh, hearing that no one else was uh, pushing for anything else, uh, the chair will entertain a motion to approve the street name uh, for the Haynes Farm subdivision uh, to be Haynes Farm Way. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. We have Haynes Farm Way uh, coming to Hopkinton. Solid waste and Oh, we won't do that right now. No, we won't squeeze that one in right now. We won't squeeze that one in right now. We won't squeeze that one in. Okay. Let's go back to item number six. Um, and I don't have my iPad with me at the moment. I don't think I can do this without that listing of all the different things. Um, I've got it all written down here in the old-fashioned way. So okay, can... thanks. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do our annual appointments by the Board of Selectmen and the Town Manager to various boards and committees as well as, okay, great, thanks, Elaine. Yeah. As well as um, posts within the community, within our town government, et cetera. And we've got a few buckets that um, we probably can put these into. Mr. Kamalo and I chatted about the buckets the other day. Um, let's start with the lowest hanging fruit or what you would perceive to be the lowest hanging fruit, Mr. Kamal, in terms of the buckets? Yes. Um, this should be the list of board members 
whose terms are expiring and the incumbents uh, have uh, confirmed their interest in continuing and there are no other interested parties uh, for those positions. Okay, so the first grouping that Mr. Kamala is suggesting, and I would agree with him that should be the lowest hanging fruit, are those individuals that currently serve, that have requested that they continue to serve, and no other individuals have stepped forward to also, or have expressed an interest in serving in that position. Is everybody good with that first? Um, yes. Distracted by all the candy in the drawer here. Where did all this come from? <laughs> Um, okay, so wh where would we find those on the list, Mr. Kamal? Is it the ones that have the yes next to the name? I mean, because there's no's and yeses as I look at my list here. Y yes, the ones that have yeses, and then look at the final column if there are no other applicants. Okay, so here's what I'd like to try and do is how do you want to do this? You want to do it one at a time, or you want to do it by grouping? As presented. As presented on the spreadsheet, but that doesn't really inform the community as to who's doing what, right? This will be a long list. <laughs> I realize it's a long list, but how about the way we've got it? On hang, on, hang on one second. Right. Well, we have all these, this is just a couple of them. We got all these other ones that we're trying to look at too. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to get my head around the whole process first. Um, Mr. Catino. Well, I, I was just, I was thinking that the same thing that Claire was saying. Get rid of these, get rid of these first. Because that, that's. Do you want to go to specific boards first, Mr. Kamal, or are you still trying to do this in a grouping? Following on the, on the concept outlined by Ms. Cortino, um, we may do it in the reverse order, but still maintain the groupings. There are positions that are contested. We know those positions. The second grouping also are the list of members who are recommended as representatives of specific committees. Those are not contested. And then the last grouping are the uh, positions that we just outlined, namely individuals who have expressed an interest to continue, and those positions are not contested. So it's so just reverse order of what we started out yes. with. Okay, let me just back up for one sec. We have 40 minutes to figure this out. We're not we rushed. We start with C and F. And it it takes a little time to go through this. So just have a little patience. We'll get we'll get going here in a minute. It's just going to take a while to start it up. Mr. T so sorry. I was saying, why don't we start out with item two C and two F? Item two C is historical commission. There's two incumbents and one applicant for three positions. Okay, and F is the Youth Commission, one applicant for three positions. So those appear to be pretty low hanging fruit, okay? Yeah. Mr. Kamal, are you okay with that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, yeah. but we just, got, we just gotta make sure that we don't miss something by changing sort of the order a little bit here. Thought process. Okay, Mr. Sestari, do you have a motion to make? Um, Let's do each one individually. Yeah, let's see, so C is, sorry. To, uh, you got them right there, please. Yes, My sorry. links aren't working, so. Okay. Uh, I, I, uh, for the Historical Commission, my understanding is the two incumbents up for reappointment are Austin Spang and Ron Yankee, both wishing to be reappointed, and we have a new applicant for the three-year at-large term, which is Nanda Barker-Hook, who is here. And um, without further ado, I would make a motion to appoint Dr. Ron Yankee, Mr. Austin Spang, and Ms. Nanda Barker-Hook to the Historical Commission for a three-year term each. I second. 
So we have a motion and a second to appoint those three individuals, Austin Spang, Mr. Yankee, and Nanda Barker Hook. Everybody clear on the motion? Mrs. Lazarus, did we get another applicant recently for the historical commission or was that the historic district? district. Historic district. Historic district, thank you. So we gotta remember that because I don't see that on the sheet, correct? Okay, um, let me just make a note of that. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Austin Spang, Ron Yankee, and Nanda Barker Hook. We have our historical commission appointments. Mr. Sestari. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I move that the board vote to approve uh, for the youth commission, new applicant and applicant. I apologize if I get your name wrong, but uh, Ziki Liu. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Did he get it right? Yes, absolutely right. Thank you. Can you write the characters, though? <laughs> <laughs> so we have a motion on the table to appoint Ziki Liu to the Youth Commission. So moved. Second. Okay, we had Mr. Sestari make the motion, right? Uh, yeah, oh, second right. then, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so Mr. <laughs> Catino is the second. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. Ziki, thank you for stepping forward. Congratulations. We look forward to seeing you on the Youth Commission. Okay, Mr. Sestari, are you out of gas? Um, yeah, I gotta look at them now. Taking out C and F. How about A? Two full incumbents and two applicants for two member and two associate. Two and full member incumbents plus two applicants. Appeals. Two full members and two associate positions. I'm confused. We have four positions and four, four applicants. Positions. Yeah. Four positions and four applicants. Did the two that applied to be full members, did they line up with full members and the two that applied to be uh, associate positions line up or did everybody want to be full? The two applicants didn't indicate which positions they were applying for. So how did we decide who's? It's at the discretion of the board. So you got to look at that a little deeper. In other words, we've got two and two. They're different positions. Oh, I understand. I understand. But the, uh, the way, as the liaison to the, to the CPA, the way that they usually move them up is associates go into full, and and the other people sit in the in the lower table to learn the learn the trade. Makes sense. Yeah. So with that, who are the two current associates? Uh, in, Mr. In Kamal. Point of clarification. The two full members who are the incumbents indicated their interest in continuing as full time as full members of the committee. It's the two associates, uh, uh, two associate, two new applicants who did not indicate their interest. Yeah. Okay. So, so we that, have that, two yeah. incumbents on the board of appeals, Mr. Damasio and Mr. Pierce. They want to continue. Does anybody want to make a motion to appoint, appoint uh, Mr. Damasio and Mr. Pierce to the Zoning Board of Appeals? So moved. Second. Okay, and we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All Just those like in I think we should specify as uh, full voting members. Yeah. Yeah, these are the full voting members, correct? Yeah, just saying we should specify that in the yeah, motion. Yeah, let's put that in. Who, did, who made the motion? Me. Okay, it's in your motion? I, I agree. Okay, and a second. Everyone's good with that? So these two were making the two full time member appointments to the Board of Appeals. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so that's done. We have two applications and we have two openings for associate members on the Board of Appeals. Two in Bose and Jessica Fleet. Are either two in or Jessica Fleet here? Two in? Two in is here. Okay. Thank you for stepping forward. Um, any thoughts on the two associate member requests? Nope. Would you like to make a motion to appoint two in Bose and Jessica Fleet as the uh, associate non-voting members of the Board of Appeals? Second. Oh. Hang on one sec, Mrs. Wright. I just have, we have a motion and a second. Yeah. We'll come back to the motion, Mrs. Wright. I just have one question, and I don't know. If, I guess Jessica is not Fleet is not here. Um, I was just looking at the application and under experience list is listed Board of Appeals, Board of Health, Planning Board. Um, 
and I and I don't quite understand. Is that in another town, Mr. Bose? No. I'm running the board of community. You're talking about Jessica. No, this is under no, Bose. Yeah, board of see. Appeals, Planning Board, and. Maybe he meant those were the ones he was interested in. Way. Interested boards. Interested. interested. Is that interested? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I see. Okay. Because I know Jessica's mentioned the same thing, and I was I was confused. Um, that's so maybe maybe this form could be reworked later so that it's a little clearer. Okay. Thank you. This is an annual. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exercise, the board needs some. The form needs some work. It looked like experience list, which didn't. Make sense to me. So we have a motion on the table and a second to appoint Mr. Bose and Ms. Fleet. There was in the motion uh, terminology specific to non-voting members. Mrs. Wright, is that Mrs. Lazarus? Is that correct? Well, it's their associate members, so they can sit as a full member in the absence of a full member and vote. Mm -hmm. okay. So I think we need to strike that language from the motion specific to non-voting members. Is that okay? Absolutely. So whoever seconded, is that okay? Yep. So we have two appointments to associate members, period. That's the motion. Everybody okay? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mr. Tuin, congratulations. Or Tuin, thank you for stepping forward. And Ms. Fleet, congratulations. Uh, and just so we, we probably should say it a couple of times if folks are watching at home, once you're appointed, uh, or reappointed, even as if you're re even if you're reappointed, you need to get sworn in by the town clerk's office before you can sit on the board and vote. Okay, so um, if Mr. Bose could be sure to get sworn in as well as all the other uh, individuals tonight. Okay, so that's item two A. Just trying tackle 2B now, right? Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. So 2B was the Council on Aging. The Council on Aging, we have three individuals looking to get reappointed. So we're, am I really going out of order now? Do you want to do this one later? No, we can simply go through the agenda listing. Right, it's fine too. That. All right, yeah. Fair enough. Okay, so the Council on Aging, we have three appoint three incumbents and two applicants for three positions. So we have Pascal Barada, Kara Walsh, and John Palich. Palich. Uh, that are current incumbents. They're all interested in seeking reappointment. We have additional applications from Georgiana Remillard and Marilyn Palmer. <coughs> I remember that resignation, my first meeting. Okay, hang on, <laughs> hang on one sec, please. Let's keep this as orderly as we can. <laughs> Mr. Kamalo, do we have new information tonight? Yes, for, for, the, for the one vacant position, Georgiana and Marilyn Palmer have applied. Georgiana called the office this afternoon. She's not able to attend tonight. The three members are on the list because their terms are expiring. The three members who are listed. Uh, so so let, 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 let's hang on, hang on one second. Let's yes. do this. This is going to be very confusing. It's our, obvious, right? It's confusing. So let's do me a favor. I appreciate your input, but I, I don't want to get into a back and forth here because we're just going to go way off the tracks here very quickly. Mr. Kamalo, we have three incumbents seeking three open pos three positions that are expiring, correct? Yes, the attempt. And then we have expiring. two additional applicants, and we have a vacancy on the committee. That is correct. Why don't we have that vacancy shown on the sheet, though? I'm not being critical. I'm just trying to understand. Did we just miss it. Okay, so we missed it. Technical error. I get it. Yes. Yeah. All right. So does everybody understand where we are? We have five applicants for four positions. Yep. Yep. Okay. 
Any thoughts on the five applicants for four positions for the Council on Aging? Uh, can you hang on one sec, please? Well, I have to say that I have tremendous respect for town volunteers who volunteer and are willing to continue to serve and institutional memory on a committee is very, very valuable. And so as a general policy, not doesn't always apply every single time, but as a general rule, I like to see people who are willing to continue to serve continue to be appoint, up, appointed as thanks for their good service. So I, I would like to reappoint the three incumbents who wish to continue. All right. Anybody else? I, you know, I, I, I agree with Ms. Wright to a point. Um, you know, I certainly think that institutional knowledge helps, uh, but I also feel that, uh, you know, there's a point where kind of mixing it up and getting new opinions, things like that is also a good idea, especially when you have other people who are interested. That said, I have no idea right now if the people who are seeking reappointment have been there for one term or eight terms. So I'm not trying to say that, um, that, that I have an idea of how to apply that to this particular uh, process for the Council on Aging. Um, but in general, uh, you know, I think that at all levels of our government, uh, we could benefit from term limits. So uh, I think that that's something to keep in mind as well. Okay. Anyone else? You don't have to uh, say anything. I'm just giving you the opportunity. I'd like to make a mo I don't know if I can make a motion to appoint Marilyn Palmer to the vacant position on this board. Mr. Kamala, would it be appropriate to thank you for the motion? Um, is there a second, by the way? Okay, so we have a motion and a second. So, Mr. Kamal, is it appropriate to single out one position, the vacant position? Because that term expires in a different time frame, right? So we, can, so we should single that out, frankly, because that's a different position, because the time expires differently, right? So, okay, excellent motion, thank you, and it works. That's fine. You agree? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, um, so we have a motion to appoint Mrs. Palmer to the vacant position on the Council on Aging. And a second. Any other discussion? Sir, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just want to get through that. You had a question. No, she, she did not make it today. Yes, she is not able to attend tonight's meeting. Okay. Yeah. Are you good? Okay, so we have a motion and a second to appoint Marilyn Palmer to the vacant position on the Council on Aging for a term to expire with the vacancy term. Do we understand that? Mm -hmm. Mrs. Wright. And I just want to comment on why I support that. Um, Marilyn is in very engaged with the affairs of the seniors and with the affairs of the senior center, and I think uh, a good committee member is, is someone who um, has those contacts and understands the needs of that community. And um, knowing Marilyn personally and the work she does, I think she would be a real plus to that board. Thank you. Mrs. Lazarus, was this vacancy position notified, or did we notify the community of the vacancy? It was. Okay. And when does that particular seat end? I don't have that. That's why I said to tied to the term that of that vacancy. So it could be next year, but it gets it going. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so Mrs. Palmer is appointed to the vacant seat on the Council on Aging. Back to the uh, three uh, positions whose term is expiring this year or just expired. Uh, we have three incumbents currently there and one other applicant. Mrs. Wright. I've already spoken that I'd support reappointing the motion? three. Um, all right, I, I move for the reappointment to the Council of Aging of Pasquale Barada, Carol Walsh, and John Pallage for a three-year term expiring 2019. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, through the chair, 
Do we have an idea of how many terms each of them have been on? I, I can answer that. I looked, they have both been on the board since 2010. Okay, thank you. I think we're all set, thanks. Mr. Kamalo, any thoughts? Nothing to add at this point. Okay. Did we get new microphones along with the new system? No. It seems really loud <laughs> in here. <laughs> Is it loud? Is it too feedback. loud? You just turned it it's up over there. Yeah, you, you oh, loud, loud, loud. Loud. Okay. Just put it right. up to 11. Um, okay, so we have a motion and a second to appoint uh, the three individuals to the Council on Aging as re articulated by Mrs. Wright. Any other discussion? I think it's great that Georgiana Remillard uh, reached out and is interested in joining. Uh, the Council on Aging is always looking for volunteers to help uh, move the organization forward. Uh, our seniors uh, have done the great things for our community and anything we can do to help them, uh, we should. And I strongly encourage uh, Georgiana to step forward or continue to step forward and help the Council on Aging uh, in a, all kinds of different volunteer capacities. So if we could please uh, get that message to her, uh, that would be great. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. Those three individuals are back to the Council on Aging. Okay, uh, the Marathon Committee. The Marathon Committee, why do we have so many people coming up this year on that committee? That seems like it's out of sync. How many people are on the Marathon Committee? Roughly. Is it a big one? Mr. Kamal, do you know how many people are on the Marathon Committee, roughly? It's a big committee though, isn't it? It is, um, and they get really busy um, preparing for the marathon. Is that why there's six people whose term is expiring this year, is because it's that big of a committee? It is a large committee. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It just seemed like a lot to yeah, expire one time. Yeah. But if it's an 18-member committee, then it makes sense, right? Maybe something like that. I think it is a big number like it that. It is a big number. Anyway. Okay. We have six incumbents and one applicant for six positions. The applicant is Mr. John Saviano. Uh, the six incumbents are Dottie, Dorothy Ferder wallace Jacques Leduc, Mary Jo Lafreniere, Jean Kahn, Craig Gormley, and Adam Monroe. And John Saviano. There are seven very active people in the community in six spots. All will be great. Any thoughts? Jack does a great job painting the line. I'd have a hard time saying no. <laughs> they all do a great job. And, and John's done so many things for Hopkinton, too. Is anybody here from the Marathon Committee tonight? Chief is here, Chief Slammon. Anybody else? Okay. <laughs> Chief, Chief Lee, Lee back there raises his hand, <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Is Mr. I thought I saw John. Is John Saviano here? John, would you kind of say hello and just give us your thoughts, real 30 second version of your interest? John Saviano. If you could do it at the mic, please. New HD cameras, too. John Saviano. I live at 25 Amherst Road in Hopkinton, and I've been uh, active in giving back to the town the past several years. I'm on the ZAC, the ZBA, and the Hopkinton Cultural Council and just wanted to volunteer um, to help out in any way I can in some of these committees. My children, are, my son has grown and I have more time to help now. <laughs> so so I'll, I'll speak to the elephant in the room, John, if it's okay with you, uh, and speak directly to it. We've got six people that are on the marathon committee. It's, it's somewhat of a technical committee. 
And uh, I know all these people personally. They do an awesome job. I see them at the start. And I see them getting ready for the whole marathon thing. Um, would you be upset if this is not the place where you could expand your uh, horizons within Hopkinton? Not at all. Because you do great work. <laughs> these guys do great work. We'd hate to lose you. Yep. But it'd be tough to kind of displace them. I'm just volunteering, and I think I've volunteered for a couple of other positions tonight. If you hang out Looking this evening for another more. half hour or so, I'm sure we could find something else. Okay. <laughs> what do you think of the Youth Commission? <laughs> so uh, with that, thank you, John. I appreciate you coming thank up. You. Uh, with that, the chair will entertain a motion to approve the six incumbents to be reappointed to the Marathon Committee. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. Mr. Chair. Mr. Kamalo. You had asked earlier the number of members in this committee. It's 21. 21. Ooh. That's a tough and one to chair. That makes sense why there's so many expiring at one time. Yeah. Okay. And in uh, fact, I think the, for the public's information, of which nine are designated as members of town departments, including police, fire, public works, schools, board of health, park and rec. Hmm. Well, and that doesn't make as much sense that we have six coming up when there's only 12 that are appointed. Yeah, something's a little off there, I think, in the terms. But we'll solve that another day. Just so you get, right, Elaine, Norman, you see what we're talking about? It just seems like there's a little, it's too heavy on the expirations this year. OK. Um, seriously, Mr. Saviano, there is an opening. There's two openings on the Youth Commission that does excellent work in town. Uh, please think about that. It's a great committee, and uh, we could use a little help there. So if you have any thoughts on that, let us know. Uh, would you be interested in being appointed to that? Would you? Uh, am I out of order in seeing if he would be interested in pointing to the Youth Commission tonight, or do we have to post that and come back again? It's been posted, is my understanding. That position has been posted. It's been posted? So he can apply for it? So you're saying we could do that? That is correct. I move to appoint John Savignano to the Youth Commission. Second. Any further discussion? Well done. <laughs> John, you good? That's fantastic. Thank you so much. All those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. Mr. Saviano will serve the town of Hopkinton on the Youth Commission. Thanks again, John. Excellent. Okay. Um, Sustainable Green Committee, two applicants and a big hold next to it, Mr. Kamalo. Why do I see hold next to that? Yeah. Yes, um, through the chair, you will recall a couple months back, uh, the board had a discussion regarding the future of this committee. Uh, there was uh, an idea uh, that involved perhaps identifying two or three or four people to act as advisors to the town engineer facilities coordinator. We're still exploring that idea and are yet to report back to the board. So you just want to hold on this for right now? Yes, hold until the board decides on the future of the committee. <coughs> Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. Good, good. Okay, so we're going to table the Sustainable Green Committee for right now for an appointments. Um, okay. We know one is going to be a tough decision for us tonight because we've got some great volunteers stepping forward for the Upper Charles Trail Committee. I think we're going to table this just for a moment. Uh, Mr. Kamalo, what I'd like to do now is we've checked ticked off a bunch of these but not all of them I'd like to go back to the master sheet and go through this from the top down okay it'll just take a few minutes and I think then we'll wrap up with the trails committee discussion is everybody okay with that all right the affordable housing trust fund board mr. Nealon is not seeking reappointment uh, Marianne Chambers is seeking reappointment the chair will entertain a motion to appoint Marianne Chambers to the affordable housing trust fund board so moved second and I should clarify, there's no additional applicants. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous and so carries. We have one opening then on the Affordable Housing Trust Fund Board. Is that correct? 
So if anybody's interested in serving on the Affordable Housing Trust Fund Board, please uh, fill out an application with the town the Selectman's Office. The Appropriation Committee, uh, we have two members whose term is expiring and um, we have one member interested in returning. Uh, I hope I get this correct. Shahidul Manon is interested in returning and Hannon Cohen is not interested in returning. So the chair will entertain a motion, Mr. Kamal. Putting a hole in this one? Why would that be? It's a different appointment process for appropriations committee members. That's true. It includes the town. Town moderator, town clerk as well. So we're going to have to do that at a separate meeting. Okay, thank you for that catch. That's a hold until a future joint meeting. Uh, the Board of Appeals we took care of, correct? Mm -hmm. The yep. Board of Registrars of Voters. Is the town clerk here with us this evening? Have we received any information from the various organizations in, in the community as to prospective candidates? No applicants. Okay, so we need to continue to seek, and we are seeking two uh, individuals to serve on the Board of Registrars of Voters. One. Sorry? One. Two. The other one's 2017. But they're both vacant. They were two residents. Oh, okay, right, right, right. Yep, 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 yep. Looking at the name. Uh, we've got an election coming up, in case anyone hasn't figured that out yet. Uh. <laughs> and it might, actually might be contested, so we better try and fill those. Um, cable Advisory Committee, we have a seat open. Uh, Mr. Hamilton was not returning on the Cable Advisory Committee. We have no applicants, so we need somebody for the Cable Advisory Committee. The Capital Improvement Committee, Jessica Shea, uh, it appears we did not reach Jessica Shea and engage her interest. Okay. Um, should we take that as an interest in continuing and reappoint? Unless she's, um, no. if she's not interested, she me let us know and we'll deal with it then. But I, I'd rather we just reappoint. I, I agree with you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I move to... Uh, appoint Jessica Shea to the Capital Improvements Committee for another term. Second. The committee's done a great job last several years with all the big projects we've yeah, had in town. Yeah, I hope she does they continue. Have. They're doing really good work. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So we'll ask that Jessica Shea continue uh, serving in the Capital Improvement Committee role. Okay. Um, we have the Community Preservation Committee. Uh, we have four term, four individuals. Um, we don't have any additional applicants. We have uh, Mr. Weissmantle serves on the CPC as the planning board representative. Um, did we hear from the planning board about that position? We did. Ken Weissmantle. And Jeff Darty is the nominee, and Jeff is near here as well. So he's a yes, as far as interest goes, right? I would think so. Um, and then we have, so we have Mr. Weissmantle, Ron Clark, Jim Cirillo, Jim Cirillo, Cirillo and Ms. Jeff Doherty, Jeffrey Doherty. Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Katina, you were making a motion. Yeah, I was going to make a motion to approve uh, Ken Weissmantle, Ron Clark, and Jim Cirillo, and Jeff Doherty. To continue there, uh, to to another term on, on the community state. preservation. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. Conservation Commission: uh, Mr. Cirillo, Melissa Ricos, and Edwin Harrow. Uh, all interested in continuing on the Conservation Commission, Mr. Sestari. Uh, I move that we appoint Jim Cirillo, Melissa Ricos, and Ed Harrow uh, to another term on the Conservation Commission. Second. Any further discussion? 
ONTCOM, another great committee in town, does an awful lot of work to protect our community, and we appreciate their service. Uh, all three of those individuals are doing a great job. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. Council on Aging, we took care of. Cultural Council, we have one, two, three, four, five. Mr. Kamalo, are there any conflicts of interest if we have a candidate for one of these positions that we work with? If you see that as a conflict, I don't, but I'm just asking the question because I work with one of these folks. Okay. Uh, I have, I have not identified any potential conflicts of interest. Okay. Do any of my colleagues have an issue with me voting on somebody I work with? Okay. He might, but you know, we don't. <laughs> okay. Um, so Steve Spector, Lama Witte, Mary Ansel, Mary Ann Guild, and Mary Weinstein. Mrs. Wright. Oh, I'm sorry. So we have an additional application, and Zeke Lou is here uh, and interested in serving on the Cultural Council. We haven't heard back from any of these people as to their interest, I gather. Okay. How often does the Cultural Council meet? Once a year. It's generally in the, during the holiday season. Uh, there's grant money that gets distributed to applicants and it's typically for you know different types of performances, whether artistic or musical or something of that nature. Um, uh, sometimes it's helping to fund, you know, maybe a musician at some type of a festival for kids. Other times it's uh, you know a, a Christmas concert, things like that. Have you had an opportunity to sit in on some of those or? Uh, yeah, I've been, I've represented the Board of Selectmen on that uh, committee for two years now. Uh, actually, I haven't taken a look at, I haven't taken a look at our uh, liaison assignments for this year, but I'm assuming I'm probably <laughs> the appointee again. You're the um, liaison to everything. Since yeah. <laughs> um, um, but it's typically once, attendance? maybe twice a year. How's the attendance? The attendance is the attendance is good. Um, you know they do. You know they're very flexible. They do a good job at trying to find dates where uh, most, if not all, all, members can make it. Like I say, typically it's one meeting a year. Sometimes it's two to three, but it's all clustered in that same November to January time frame. And the youth commission is. Uh, I'm not jumping outside the four corners here. I'm trying to something through the youth commission is a much heavier lift in town uh, there's a lot more activity they meet far more regularly and they've got a lot more activities going so um, I think I think if, if Zeke who applied for this uh, who was also on the youth commission um, could kind of drive that energy into the youth commission that's really a big lift for the community and very important maybe let this one kind of sit i don't want to tell you what to do but uh, I'll, I'll also say that having having had experience with the youth commission especially at that time of year that november to january there's a lot of gearing up uh for the martin luther king celebration and, um, and the different events around that weekend so you know they kind of coincide uh you know the, the greater amount of effort for the Youth Commission being at the same time of year as when the meetings typically are for, uh, for the Cultural Council. Okay. Zeke, we were politely trying to steer you in a certain direction, but we don't want to tell you what to do. <laughs> it's not our role. Do you have an issue with what we're sort of suggesting? That's very refreshing. Can we give her a second seat on the... Uh, well, we've got other things we can do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sit tight, Z, you, were kind of, you and John months. are our backup plan right here. Yeah, I was just wondering if there's a way we can still keep her application active, but the, because the fact is we have not had a positive answer back from any of these people, so we might mo go ahead and approve these incumbents as we've been doing tonight, uh, and, and should we find that one of them after the fact doesn't want to be reappointed, we could uh, re-engage 
with this current application that we have. Yes, what we do is we do a bulk appointment, what we're doing tonight, uh, the beginning, roughly the beginning of each fiscal year. And then throughout the year, if some openings come up, we will appoint yeah. intermittent as well. So if that scenario does play out, uh, then we'd certainly consider it. And Zeke seems like she's very eager to help the community in many ways. So uh, we certainly don't want any volunteers to get pushed away. We want to pull everybody in and hang on as best we can. But it's possible to keep her application sort of in our database for that job sure. so that if it comes up, she doesn't need to find out about it again. We can, we can reactivate. Okay. I'm sure <coughs> Mr. Kamala and Mrs. Lazarus will take care of that for us. Okay. So um, with that, the chair will entertain a motion to approve uh, Steve Spector, Lama Witte, Mary Ansel, Mary Ann Guild, and Mary Weinstein to the Cultural Council. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. The Historic District Commission. The Historic District Commission um, has two representatives up for appointment. One is Michael Ahn. Uh, from the Board of Realtors, who is the Board of Realtors representative. We have not heard from him. Owen. Owen. Thank you. And one is Mrs. Wright, who's not seeking reappointment, correct? Mrs. Wright? Correct. Okay. We also received an application today or yesterday from, mm -hmm. from Sandy Altamira uh, to serve uh, the community on the historical Dist historic district commission. Is that correct, Mrs. Lazarus? That's correct. Okay. So we have, uh, I think Sandy would be an awesome member of this committee, by the way. If I may add to that, there was also received late this afternoon a uh, note from the chairman of the historical commission of <coughs> that the commission nominates Mrs. Altamira as the commission representative. Yep. It, 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 it's a historical commission. It's a spot that is to be a nomination presented by the historical commission. So the, the historical, historical commission, commission is nominating has presented, her to is the nominating historical her. district commission. Oh. That's right. And I did provide that email yep. to you. This so how does that play into who we appoint? Or is it we can both do the same thing? We can both do the same thing, right? Right. Or do they have an, if we appoint if we appoint Sandy, which I would like to do, if we appoint Sandy, then they can appoint somebody else, or no? no? You're appointing her as the representative from Historical Commission. Kind of like Ken is Ken is a representative from the Planning Board uh, on the yes. CPC. Okay, it's, it's similar to that. It says the Historical Commission one representative I got you. I got you. nominated okay. by the Historical Commission, okay. and they have nominated her. So, any other thoughts on this particular committee? No. no the I'm chair will entertain a motion to appoint Sandy Altamira to be a member of the Hopkinton Historic District Don't Commission. Move. Second. Mr. Catino, Mr. Ted Stone. Any further discussion? Are we I'll going to also add uh, Michael Allen? Oh. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. So, I'll entertain a motion to appoint both Mrs. Altamira and Michael on to the uh, Hopkinton Historic District Commission. I'm assuming Michael's interested. If not, again, we'll figure that out later. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, Sandy and Michael. Thank you for your service. Historic Commission we took care of, correct? Uh, housing Authority. Uh, Marilyn Palmer, is her term is expiring, and she I'm assuming is interested in continuing. Mr. Chair, I move that we appoint Marilyn Palmer to the Housing Authority. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Marathon Committee we took care of. Let's take a two second break here. Are there any members of the audience that have a particular interest in any one of these committees besides the Hopkinton Upper, or the Upper Trails Committee? Uh, I want to make sure we don't miss any somebody. I'm sorry, your name please? And Christine, what commission are you interested in? Well, I have attended a youth commission meeting in Dana, Louisiana, but I don't know if I'm Sit right there. We're oh. going to come right back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for raising your hand. Anybody winner. else? <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, we're going to come right back to you in a minute here. So, Marathon Committee, we did Permanent Building Committee. This is great. Um, Mr. Kamalo, 
Do you remember how long I fought you about the permanent building committee? I thought you supported the concept, Mr. Chair. <laughs> um, I fought you on it for years. I was wrong. You were right. It's been an awesome committee in town, and uh, I'm glad you pushed back on me on that one. I think it's done a great job, and uh, I hope we continue with a permanent building for committee for many years to come. But I want to take this tonight to say I was wrong and you were right. That's a first, right? That, that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have two, Michael Damasio and Babe uh, the body. Uh, so Babe is not, it can't continue, it does not, it's not gonna serve going forward, can't continue going forward. Uh, Michael Damasio, uh, Chair will entertain a motion to appoint Mr. Damasio back to the Permanent Building Committee. I move. Second. Any discussion? <coughs> Those in favor, aye. aye. Any opposed? Mr. Kamal, we have one vacancy there. That's in committee that we need to get filled. Uh, the Permanent Building Committee, for anybody that's interested, uh, oversees uh, the building projects uh, in Hopkinton, uh, pretty much all of them. Sometimes we have a separate building committee by law we're required to have for a school and the like, but the Permanent Building Committee is even involved in that process. So if you're interested in uh, construction, you're interested in real estate, you're interested in commercial real estate or public buildings, you know, town assets, things like that, uh, think about the Permanent Building Committee. Okay, uh, Regional Vocational School Representative. I'd like to make a motion to reappoint Ruth Knowles <laughs> to the Regional Vocational School Representative. She's been on it since I went there a thousand years ago. <laughs> okay, is there a second? Second. Mr. Kamal, is there also a member of the Board of Selectmen that serves on that committee? That's me. I don't remember if he's specifically a liaison or an active member of the committee. Um, wasn't Mrs. Gates on the committee at one point as a selectman? I can check my notes quickly. She, she was, was and I thought she was very active on that, wasn't she? So I think it's a voting position along with Ruth. I think you get two. One is an elected official and one is an appointed official. We should confirm that. Have you been to one of their meetings yet? Because you got appointed by us yep. and you should be a voting member of the school committee, the regional school committee, and I think Ruth is the second. Pretty sure that how, that's how it works. Well, let's confirm that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll follow up on this and okay. We have a motion and a second to appoint Ruth Knowles to the regional vocational school representative. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. The Tax Relief Committee. Um, we have Patricia Cooney, Maureen Dunell, and John Palmer. Maureen Dunell uh, would be a no as she is no longer our town treasurer, having done an excellent job for a long time. Uh, and Patricia Cooney cannot continue to uh, participate. Mr. Palmer is interested in continuing. Uh, we could uh, appoint Michael Connolly, who is our new treasurer, to that position. Correct, Mr. Kamalo? Correct. Uh, leaving only one vacancy. The chair will entertain a motion to appoint Michael Connolly, town treasurer, and Mr. John Palmer to serve on the tax relief committee. Moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Um, I, one, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, I just have one quick question. It says that Mr. Palmer's expiration was in 2015. Is that a typo? Scribner's. What do they call it? Scribner's error? Scribner's error. Yeah. That'd be an Thank old you. word. All those in favor, good? All those in favor, aye. aye. Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. Veterans Celebration Committee. Jim Robley's done a fantastic job. job on that committee. Uh, and he's seeking to be reappointed. I think it would be, uh, th that's a no brainer. Motion to move, Jim to the Veterans Celebration Committee. Second. Okay, any discussion? Thank you, Jim, for continuing. He does excellent work. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. Woodville Dis Historic District Commission, Tina Burlad and Sean Davin. Um, we have a Historical Society representative as well as an at-large. Um, they've done some nice work in Woodville. Historic District Commission there as well. Motion to approve Tina and Sean to the Woodville Historic District Commission. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
It's unanimous and so carries. Youth Commission, we already tackled, except we have an additional person here this evening interested um, in serving on the Youth Commission. We have one opening at this point. Um, and uh, we have an opportunity to appoint, I'm sorry, your name again, please? Christina Anderson. And Christina has expressed an interest in the Youth Commission. She's attended a Youth Commission meeting or two and is eager to get involved. Mr. Chair, I move that the board vote to approve Christina Anderson uh, for a position on the Youth Commission, uh, term ending in three years, Mr. Kamala. Yeah. Yes. Second that. Yeah. We have a motion and a second to appoint Christina to the Youth Commission. Any discussion? Christina, thank you for being patient tonight and raising your hand. We look forward to your service. All those in favor, aye. aye. Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. Congratulations, Christina. Okay, um, special officers reappointments. We have a list of special officers here. Uh, I'm just going to read them real quick. Evan Brooks, Don Creswell, Paul Colton, Megan Durad, Jane Goodman, Michael Hamilton, Derek McGill, Henry Pine, Darlene Haynes, Darlene Haynes, just to be clear, <laughs> Stephen Adrola, John Litchfield, James Collins, Douglas Lewis, Carl Harris, Stephen Slammon. Chief, do you have to be a special officer as well? Is that part of the gig? But we should do it, right? Okay, Mr. Kamal, does that make sense to you? I think he should remain on the list. Okay. Uh, just check in chief, that's all. William Lukey, Douglas Oliver, Philip Goodwin, Stuart Montgomery, Thomas Poirier, William Proctor, Robert Santucci, and Richard Flannery. Hi, chief. Uh, chair will entertain a motion to reappoint those special officers. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, you know, just on the, on the topic of Chief Slammon, uh, I do understand that it's beneficial to have him on this list, and I'd like to continue to keep him on the list. Um, and I, I'm relieved to hear that you haven't been out there doing details. I just want to make sure that we're not going to have him out there doing details, and this is going to be one of those things that, that is, you know, to cover him, to cover the town in special situations. Certainly would, we wouldn't want him working some other detail and then for there to be a, a major event uh, on the other side of town that he has to leave. That contract that. Exactly. Okay. All right. okay so Thanks, Chief. Yeah, good question. I think we just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Okay. Um, so any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. We're good with the special officer reappointments. Next up, town council. General Labor Council, Ray Mieres from Mieres and Harrington, LLP, is our town council, and Nicholas Anastopoulos from Merrick O'Connell is our Labor Council. The chair will entertain a motion to reappoint uh, our town council and Labor Council. Labor Council. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second for town council and Labor Council. Any discussion? Mr. Kamal, is there a contract involved in this? In, in, do you mean in terms of signing an actual contract? Yes. We have a scope of services agreement uh, and a retainer agreement with both. With the retainer agreement is with uh, labor c with uh, our town council, and the scope of services agreement with uh, special labor council. Okay. Um, just from one uh, member's perspective, uh, I joined the board. Uh, a few years back when a lot of discussion in the community was about legal services and the exorbitant expenses surrounding the legal services uh, in our budget. Uh, I think we've done an excellent job over the years getting that under control and uh, Mr. Mieres and Nick do an excellent job for the community. I fully support reappointing them and I think from a uh, cost perspective, just thinking about the business side for a minute, uh, they're extremely competitive. Uh, for the services that they offer the community 
And um, I know it's a lot of money that's spent, but it's not nearly what it's been uh, in the past. And I know it's extremely competitive compared to the current market for that level of legal services. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. Is it okay to vote both those together, Mr. Kamala? Yes, that's okay. All right, so that's, those both are reappointed. And then we have the Director of Municipal, Municipal Inspections appointments. Do we do these? The recommendations are the to, to the town manager and the board has to affirm the town manager appointments. So yeah, affirming the town manager appointments. So you have made you you are recommending to us to make these appointments as listed, and um, we just want our affirmation. Yes. Okay. So the the the, the town manager uh, through the charter is making the following appointments: Charles Debreets to the plumbing and gas inspector, Peter Zresky to assistant plumbing and gas inspector, Daniel Hunt assistant plumbing and gas inspector, Edward Hicks wiring inspector, Edward Hicks the person to cut wire in case of fire. Uh, Louis Travellini, Assistant Wiring Inspector. James Melnick, Jr., Assistant Wiring Inspector. Michael Crisofuli, Mutual Aid Building Inspector. Louis Sakin, Sealer of Weights and Measures. Thomas McIntyre, Public Weigher. John Palmer, Public Weigher. Jamie Adams, Public Weigher. Jamie Wright, Public Weigher. Chelsea Adams, Public Weigher. And Stephen Narodosik. Narodosik. Narodosik, Public Weigher. So the chair will entertain a motion to make those reaffirmations of the town manager's appointments. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so with that, I believe, and please anyone chime in if I'm wrong, I believe we have one group yet to appoint or position yet to appoint and that is for the Upper Trails. Upper Charles. Upper Charles. <laughs> Upper Charles Trail Committee. UCTC. Okay. Mr. Kamal, can you just give us the overview here just while I get myself organized? Yes. Um, as, as many other committees in town, this is one committee that has done a fabulous job moving forward the trails agenda in town. Uh, the specific request to the board is to appoint uh, three um, members of the committee from six applicants, uh, one full member and two alternate positions. One full, two alternates. Yes. And like the Zoning Board of Appeals, the alternates can vote in the case of an absence of a member, of a, a full member at any particular meeting? Yes. Okay. Do they have to sit on all? They don't, like us, they don't have to sit for everything. Okay. All right, so bottom line is we need to find one full member and two alternate members uh, to reappoint. But let me ask a question. So the Upper, Tra Upper Charles Trail Committee shows <coughs> one, two, three, four members seeking reappointment, correct? Plus the vacancy is five. Two vacancies. Two vacancies is six. So I'm trying to get that straight here. If we have six candidates, no, we have ten candidates for six spots. The other vacant position The other vacant position, so we have two vacancies. Fair enough. Okay. So The two alternates, the designates that oh, okay. So we're going to appoint three? Okay. And are all these people that are applying, do they, are they also abutters? No. Are any of them abutters that we know of? Which ones are abutters? Oh, okay. But, but we have, um, we have, I think, a similar question to what we had before, Mr. Sasari. We have... Okay, let's just go through it. Barry Rosenblum is a current member and he wants to be reappointed, but his position expires. So that position's quote open, right? And then we have David O'Brien, same situation. 
Jane Moran, same situation, and John Catino. Wait a minute. Appointed by our board. You see why I'm getting confused? Mr. Kamal, you've got that look on your face that you're going to fix me. Um, I, I'm, I'm just think, thinking of a, of a more efficient process. Um, they are the open positions created by the expiring terms of which the incumbents have said they want to continue serving in this very important committee in town. So I think that's, that's the easier piece to settle. After that, you then have the one full member and the two alternates. But in theory, because these terms are expiring, those positions are open, and all these candidates could fill one of those positions. Exactly. In theory. Exactly. In theory, That's what yes. I was trying to ask a minute. Exactly. Ago, right? In, in right. theory, yes. Okay, so let's try and tackle this in two stages, but with that understanding that, and, and you know, this is where it gets a little difficult because we're all volunteers. We, we volunteer for this. I love when people yell at me when they say on the street, for what we pay you, selectmen, you should be doing X, Y, and Z. Well, they, no one gets paid, and we're, we're all volunteers here. But we have, we have to first decide if we want to just do the reappointment of incumbents. Because that's going to whittle down the number of spots we have open. <coughs> See what I'm saying? Or do we want to open it all up and kind of try and figure out all of it? The pegs uh, going where? If, if I may, to the chair, uh, I, I'm, I've been on the committee as the as the uh, planning board rep for a few years, and then for the last uh, two years as the um, uh, board of selectmen rep. And um, it's a well-oiled machine, the way that the way the board works, um, from acquiring land to. Uh, meeting with the state to meeting with the uh, with uh, other boards committees and the town manager um, and the progress that's been made just over the last five years is just uh, amazing and um, uh, the the members that are seeking reappointment are just very very strong and and uh, deserve uh, just like we were saying before absolutely deserve the the chance to continue because it's uh, such an important board in town. I think they've been doing a great job as well. Um, Mr. Kamala, how long has this committee been around? Yeah, three to four years. And yeah. is this a committee that, uh, you know, we see a point where it begins to sunset, or is there a maintenance mode uh, at some point, or do we, do we wipe it out and, you know, uh, Create a new, a new committee to uh, w with more broad governance. Uh, what's what's the vision? I guess. From my perspective, I think this is this is the the heavy lifting phase of this committee's work. Right. Um, for expressly, I think three reasons. Uh, they completed the master plan for the town trail system, and now is the phase to begin implementation, which brings me to the second point. Second point being, the town has acquired through different agreements with developers some funding that will allow part of that implementation to progress immediately. And then thirdly, uh, in the last two or three annual town meetings, land has been purchased to actually allow the implementation to move forward. So I see this as the point where things are gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I mean, uh, you know, I think that this is the heavy lifting period, and as I say, I agree with Mr. Catino um, that this group has, has really done a great job uh, in the last few years in making those land acquisitions, really lining things up and, and kind of getting the stars aligned to make things happen. Uh, I would hesitate, I would hesitate to shake things up at this point. Uh, you know, even, even being a believer in term limits, uh, you know, I don't think that uh, the the uh, age of this committee, uh, the, the committee itself, not the individuals, is such that uh, I would start entertaining something like that, and especially when they're really hitting their stride and, and we're at, you know, probably the most critical point in their job, in their job. Okay, 
Anybody else speaking to the question about the incumbents getting reappointed? Sorry? Sure. I'd like to make a motion in recognition of job well done and not being in favor of changing horses in midstream on an important project that we reappoint the three incumbents, Barry Rosenblum, David O'Brien, and Jane Moran for three-year terms. Second. Second. Third. Oh. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to reappoint Barry Rosenblum, Dave O'Brien, and Jane Moran to another three-year term each. What about uh, Mr. Catino? Why isn't he? Yeah, we're going to come to that in a set. Let's we'll, right. we'll come to that. It's a good question, but it's because he's a different animal over here. <laughs> um, so moved. Not in the negative <laughs> sense. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> okay. um, all those in favor of those three reappointments signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries for those three uh, positions. Mr. Catino is a member of the Board of Selectmen who's a representative on the Upper Tra Charles Trails Committee. Um, did we reappoint him before tonight? We yes. did, right? So we don't really need to address him tonight. So that can just take that off the list. So that's all set. Okay? Good with that, Mr. Tedstone? Yes. Okay, so that leaves us now with three positions, one of which is full and two of which are alternates, okay? And for those three positions, we have Christine Anderson, Brian Fitzgerald, Karen Manzella, Mark Owens, John Saviano, and Eric Sonnet. Are any of those individuals here tonight? I am. One, four, two, three. Four. Three. Three. Four. Mr. Sonnet, Ms. Anderson, Mr. Saviano. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, John, I see your hand. Four. Right, Mr. Fitzgerald. So we have Christina's here, we have Brian Fitzgerald's here, we have John Saviano here, and we have Eric Sonnet here. Is that correct? Yes. So Karen and Mark were unable to, cut, to make it this evening. Okay. All right. Why don't we try and tackle the full-time appointment or the full member appointment first? If it's okay with the board, and then we address the alternate members. Mrs. Wright. I would like to make a motion to appoint Eric Sonnet as the full-time member. Um, he has served admirably and uh, has received a ringing endorsement from the chairman of that committee as to the importance of his continuing on this board. So I think the town would be well served with Mr. Sonnet staying on this board. Second motion. That. Second. I'll second that. Okay, sorry. No, you can go ahead and second it. Yeah. We have a motion and a second by Mr. Ted Stone. I'm confused. If Mr. Sonnet was on the board, why isn't he on the list tonight? Was he the Parks and Rec representative? Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. We have a motion and a second on the table for Mr. Sonnet to be the full-time appointee. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. Mr. Sonnet will be the full member of the Upper Trails. Upper, UT, UCTC. Upper Charles Trail Committee. Thank you, Mr. Sonnet, for stepping forward. Okay, we have two additional positions. Uh, and for those that are in attendance uh, or interested at home, uh, an alternate member of any board in town um, has sort of all the rights, responsibilities to participate. They just don't vote unless there's a missing member needed, and then they need that vote uh, for that particular evening or that particular meeting. So it's, it's like being there unless they've got a full board, and then maybe you won't get the vote. But you can participate and contribute uh, as well as anybody else. Okay, So it's not really a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's, it's not a tiered approach to responsibility and authority and stuff like that. It's just how we do it to have backups, if you will. So um, we, we know Christina's here. We know John's taking on two roles tonight. John, are you full with your responsibilities now? The Youth Commission can be a lot of work, a lot of good work. 
Um, and Christina, also the Youth Commission can be a lot of good work. Sorry, Mr. Chair, which which applicants are present right now? Christina, so Christina's Brian. here, Brian Fitzgerald's here, John Saviano's here, and Eric Sonnet is here. So we've taken care of Mr. Sonnet in that he's the full member um, for a three-year term. Um, Mr. Chair, in the interest in the interest of um, I guess kind of you know giving giving people opportunities to be on multiple committees, but not forgive the term, but too many multiple committees, um, uh, but really kind of trying to spread things out. Uh, I'm, I'd like to nominate uh, Christine Anderson and Brian Fitzgerald uh, for the positions. I'll do respect to Mr. Savignano and, and appreciation of the efforts that you're putting in and, and stepping forward. You're on a few committees right now um, outside of what we've appointed tonight already, so. We have a motion on the table. I second, second it. We have a second by Mr. Ted Stone. Any discussion? Everybody good? I think we have uh, great volunteers stepping forward in town, uh, not only for this committee, but for all the things we've done tonight. And we certainly appreciate everybody being here and watching the process and helping out. And look forward to the great uh, work by the Upper Charles Trails Committee. Uh, the trails in Hopkinton are just really becoming awesome. I run a lot of them, and uh, they're great. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. Thank you all. And uh, we have our Upper Charles Trail Committee set. That's a great job. With that, Mr. Kamalo, I believe we have concluded our work on appointments for the evening. Is that true? Great I believe job. so. I'm sorry? I believe so. Uh, we will do a fact check in the office again just to make sure our database covers yeah, everything. We may have to find one or two in the you know, couple. Right. Mr. Chair, if I just might make one comment that perhaps we can rework this application form a little to be a little easier to read and a little more useful. There are some lines like EXP, I assume that meant experience when I guess it means interest. Um, and also, I think it would really be helpful Inspired. to have room for a, an applicant to make a statement. Why are you interested in serving on this board? Um, because we've had a number of applicants that really didn't have any background in town experience uh, uh, of other town boards for us to get our arms around. So I think a statement from the applicant as to why they're attracted to this board and why they want to serve would really, would really help as we look at these. So um, I, I'd just like to see that form reworked to provide a little more useful, easier to read information. Yeah, that should be easy to do. Uh, we do this through people forms. We control that form so we can make any adjustments that we deem necessary. Good. Thank you. Everybody good? So next on the agenda would likely be the solid waste and recycling contract renewal if we were going to go in order. But uh, with the board's uh, approval, I'd like to move ahead to item number 11. We have guests with us this evening. No need to tie them up any further. Uh, we'd be right on time if we took them now at 8.40. Yep. Um, and that is the Dynasty Restaurant uh, discussion. Uh, the board of selectmen will meet with the Dynasty Restaurant, uh, who is the licensee, to review um, a couple of uh, items that have come up in recent weeks uh, here in town. And uh, we have our police chief with us here this evening as well as part of that discussion. Mr. Kamal, do you want to sort of introduce the idea and suggested process for this discussion? Yes, through the chair, uh, this is an issue that is listed on the agenda for discussion purposes. Um, the restaurant, uh, Dynasty Restaurant, appeared in two reports that were reported previously to the Board of Selectmen, namely the alcohol compliance check operation, as well as the last place serves report. Uh, we did invite the um, the owner as well as uh, their representative uh, to come before the board uh, and have a conversation uh, with the board on these two issues. At this point, I believe if, if the chair uh, is so inclined, uh, we may invite the chief to simply summarize the two reports and then also give the uh, dynasty representatives an opportunity to 
uh, begin a discussion and conversation with the board on this issue. So while the chief makes his way to the microphone to help us understand the situation a little bit or refresh our memories, uh, Mr. Kamal, just to clarify though, um, with respect to alcohol license uh, procedural violations, and correct me if I misstate anything, uh, there's a couple of processes that we must follow if we were going to take any kind of actions uh, with respect to those license holders in situations that have presented themselves. Is that a fair statement? It's a fair statement, and in the context of this case, I think the reason why this issue is on the agenda tonight is that the board received a report from the police chief, and for the board to make an informed decision as to whether to move to next steps, we felt it was appropriate uh, that the licensee appears before the board to give the board any additional information that may be required uh, in terms of its decision regarding the next steps. So the conversation tonight is for everybody to get on the same page as to where we are in the discussion. And then if the board is so inclined uh, that we would move to uh, uh, take, if we decide that we want to take, we need to take further steps, that would be done at a separate time in a different format in terms of the agenda and how it's listed on the agenda. By way of illustration, there are two options for the board. If the board decides based on the information received tonight to take no action, the discussion ends today. Flip side, the other alternative or the other option for the board is if the board decides um, that the information presented as a complete story from the chief as well as the licensee requires further action by the board, the board may decide to hold a public hearing. And during that public hearing, the board may decide either to levy a penalty <coughs> or not levy a penalty. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Does everybody understand where we are? Mm -hmm. and what we're doing and what we're not doing? Yep. Okay. Fair? Uh, Chief, hang on a sec. So the, applic or the, the, the uh, folks from Dynasty understand kind of what we're sorting through here? Everybody good? Yes, we understand. Thank you. Chief Lee. Uh, I had uh, two incidents. First is on Thursday, uh, June 9th, 2016. Uh, we, uh, well, my detective units uh, conducted an alcohol undercover compliance check to check uh, for underage uh, people being served. In the operation to underage females were used in an undercover capacity. Their identification was checked to confirm their age. Both were administered a PBT test. That's a uh, alcohol breath test uh, prior and at the conclusion the operation to confirm the undercover females had not consumed any alcoholic beverages. During this operation every establishment in Hopkinton that sells alcoholic beverages were also checked for the exception of two and every te everyone tested okay. Uh, in the case of the uh, Dynasty restaurant at uh, uh, 746 hours uh, the undercover entered the restaurant, waited uh, at the bar. The undercover was approached by the bartender and requested a Bud Light. The bartender opened up the bottle of Bud Light and placed it in front of the undercover and walked away. The undercover left the unconsumed beer on the bar and left the establishment. The undercover immediately reported uh, what occurred to Detective Burchard and another uh, uh, Detective DeBoer. The undercover uh, further described the bartender that was served to the detectives Dynasty, spoke with the female manager, the female bar, uh, bartender was brought over to the lobby. This person exactly fit the description that the undercover provided to the detectives. The bartender was uh, identified as uh, Donna Aldridge. The manager and the bartender were advised that the of the violation and were told the report would be forwarded to myself and forwarded to the board. On the uh, second occasion, the uh, uh, not an incident involving the Hopkinton Police Department, but the Attorney General's office uh, released a list uh, called uh, Last Drink Served. This is a, uh, a program that is used when people are uh, convicted of DUIs. Uh, they, uh, as part of their uh, plea agreement, they give up the uh, last place that they consumed alcohol. And uh, we're not sure the, uh, the agency that, that made the arrest that wasn't disclosed to us but in fact, uh, it's a court re uh, record that on uh, 
2 12 2 16 uh, the date of the arrest someone had said their last uh, drink was served at the dynasty restaurant 77 west main street in hopkinton chief a quick question if i could please um you mentioned that the, the the bartender and the manager were made aware of the violation yes. uh, by the detectives and that you would be made aware of it as well. That's when they were made aware of the violation, did they have any comments or any thoughts or did they acknowledge the situation or was it, what happened then? No, neither of that was uh, uh, added to the points if, if there was a, uh, any discussion uh, or uh, feedback, they just uh, said they understood. Any questions for the chief? Okay, if we could hear from our this one. Mr. Kamal. Through the chair, uh, in, in my conversations with, with the chief as well as with council, uh, we did confirm that all the steps that the police department that I took did comply with the guidelines that are set for these operations. And I wanted that to be shared with the board. Are those guidelines town guidelines, state guidelines, or both? <coughs> ABCC established guidelines. Uh, the key th two things being prior notification made um, publicly through our local press, that was done. And then two, that immediately following the, the, the compliance check, the licensee was notified of the outcome by the police department. Chief, how often are these compliance checks done? Uh, right now, approximately uh, once a year, but we try to stagger it at, at, at different times as not to uh, And before your tenure, was this always done? Uh, yes, your tenure? This, this has been done in the past. Is it a requirement uh, by the it community? It's not necessarily a requirement, but any progressive uh, police department out there and uh, in the uh, area of compliance uh, certainly does this and other activities as well. Do we keep records of how many checks are done in certain establishments in town? Absolutely. We have. Uh, we know how we many certainly checks have checked for the last uh, uh, three years, uh, uh, possibly more. I'd have to go back and check prior to. Do you know roughly how many checks have been done uh, in recent years with respect to I know there's this uh, license? Uh, uh, this license, I, I'd have to get to, confirm that, but they always check and, and they've been doing it on a regular basis for the past, I would say 10 years. And I assume every time uh, uh, they did the, the checks, they would certainly be involved in it. So, but I am not aware of any other violations. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right, I'll, let's come back to that in a minute. Uh, so at this time I'd invite Mr. Nealon to join us and perhaps uh, his client if they want to speak to the Mr. Chair, can I ask the chief one quick question? Sure. Chief, stay close. We're going to go back and forth here. We're having a, this is the discussion, right? So we're all going to discuss. Mr. Ted's Chief, the the um, the last drink served um, report. The last time that we had a meeting and you brought that up, is that not considered kind of subjective where if you were pulled over and um, say you were last served at uh, Cornell's and you didn't want to get Cornell's in trouble, if you said, where was the last place you had a drink, you could say the dynasty or you could say the gun club or you could say wherever. Is it somewhat subjective or is that? It's more of a, I think it's, it was created as kind of an educational play, uh, piece and more of let people know so we could have a discussion, but by no means would you be able to, you know, prosecute. There'd be no conviction someone, based on that. Exactly, okay. hold someone responsible okay. for that. Thank you. Someone might say anything to avoid, yep. like you said. Mr. Nealon. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, my name is John Nealon. <clears throat> I'm here on behalf of uh, the Dynasty Restaurant and the owner and manager, Rosie Liang, who is present before the board this evening. Her husband, uh, Charlie Liang, is at the restaurant uh, working this evening. However, her attendance here represents his interest as well in the, in the restaurant. Uh, first, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to state on behalf of uh, the Liangs that I'm not here tonight to in any way challenge the chief's um, summary that he gave to the board, the process, nor the facts that he expressed to the board. 
Um, they are not being challenged by the owners and the licensee. Uh, and I want to make that clear from the outset. Um, they very much understand that uh, their ability to hold a license in Hockington uh, to serve alcohol is a privilege and not a right. And they're um, very serious about that and they're taking this situation very seriously. Um, the business has been in operation for 22 years. I had the privilege 22 years ago of representing Rosie's and Charlie's aunt and uncle who were the original owners um, when they first came into town. And I uh, handled the licensing for them before the then Board of Selectmen. So I have a connection with this business. Uh, and I'd like to say from a personal point of view and as also as a, as a local business person that uh, they've been a good business neighbor, uh, an excellent business neighbor, I would say. Um, but with that as a background, they are not making any excuses for uh, the incident that occurred that the chief explained. Now, um, I do think it's important, though, to give the board just a little bit of background. I interviewed extensively the bartender who was on duty that evening, Donna Aldrich. Uh, she feels very badly about what happened, extremely badly. She has been there actually for the 22 years before Rosie and her husband took over the business which was about eight years ago. Donna's the longest standing employee at the dynasty. Mm. Uh, I don't think she's ever had an issue before with respect to um, identification of, of uh, consumers and, and customers uh, coming into the bar in the restaurant area for a drink. Um, what she did tell me, and I, and I do wanna share it with the board because I think you deserve an explanation as to the background. And she's making no excuses, and I want to point that out, and I'll probably repeat that again before I finish. Um, what she s indicated to me was that uh, on this particular evening, um, some people came, a group of people came in, uh, a few of whom she knew because she's been there for a long time, and she knows a lot of the faces and the customers. And the individual that was part of the um, sting process happen to either come in at the same time or, or be around that, those individuals that came in. <coughs> she, knowing these people, didn't question in her mind that they would ever have with them a person who was underage and asking for a drink. Not an excuse. I think she let her guard down and I think she would admit that she let her guard down. There wasn't a request for a beer. She did give the beer to the individual and she uh, walked away to attend to another customer. One of the things that's happened at the dynasty since that evening is that Rosie and her husband have sort of looked at their operation in terms of <coughs> how things have run, are run, particularly when it gets a little bit busier than normal. And uh, the way that it's set up uh, prior to this incident is that the bartender waits on the customers, serves them the alcoholic beverages, but also if people are going to eat at the bar, the bartender is responsible for taking their orders, placing the orders with the kitchen, and then retrieving the food when it's indicated from the kitchen that the food is ready. As a result of this incident, in a review of their process, uh, Rosie and her, and her husband have decided that they're going to be much more vigilant in terms of assisting the bartenders with help on a busier night when the other duties are called for with respect to food and going in the kitchen so that the bartender can spend almost all of the time necessary to be right in the area where any consumers would come in uh, requesting alcohol. Um, all of the bartenders at the dynasty are required to have TIPS certification. That's a certific an educational certification that uh, you probably are aware of from your licensing duties for the town of Hockington. They are all going to be, re any that are, that have expired, uh, when they're hired, they're required to, to have it. Any that have been expired, they're all on this coming Sunday in Westboro, uh, and there's just a, a couple of them, are being recertified under the TIPS program. The dynasty ownership is now going to make it a policy that no bartender certification can ever expire while they're employed. In other words, prior to their expiration date, they have to be recertified. And my understanding is it, it happens every two years 
uh, the, the certification uh, can be updated. And they've also made that policy change as well. Um, again, uh, I just want to reiterate that they consider and they covet their license as a, as a very valuable asset of their business and their livelihood. Uh, this is how they support their family. Uh, for anybody that is a, a customer of theirs, um, they know they're always there. They work seven days a week, um, both uh, Rosie and, and her husband, Charlie. It's very much a family business in terms of management. It's not absentee by any uh, manner at all. Uh, they open and they close seven days a week. Um, and I want the board to, to understand that as well, that they, uh, uh, they're just taking this issue very seriously. They have no issue with the police or the chief in, in the process. Um, it helps them be a better business, and I've discussed that with uh, Rosie and Charlie, and, and they really understand it. Um, unfortunately, this did occur, and they're going to do everything within their power in extending with their policy changes with their employees to hopefully avoid it ever happening again. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, on this one, I'll start, if that's okay. Just uh, kind of raise a couple of points. Uh, one, uh, you know, I've been doing this, this is my third term, second year, third term, so eight years uh, over a 10 year period because I could, took a couple years off to do some other crazy stuff. Um, I've never seen a sting operation come before us with a situation that I can remember anyway, and Mr. Sestari might recall differently, but I don't, I don't think I've ever seen it happen before in town where we had a problem like this. Uh, I never saw the dynasty ever come before us uh, for an issue like this uh, or other issues related to the license that I recall. Um, so. I don't see a pattern here. I think the, the restaurant is a uh, institution in town. Uh, it's widely uh, loved by many. And um, I'd like to find a way that we all learn from this and move on. Um, but I, I, don't have a, um, I don't have a predisposition that, okay, this is a problem place and this is a problem again and here we go. You know, that kind of, I don't, I'm not coming at it from that angle. I'm trying to come at it from a learning perspective and a growth perspective, not only for the business, but for the community. Sure. What's, what I find um, I don't know if interesting is the right word, but I think uh, what's different is the dynasty was there by itself for 20 years, whatever, you know, in that corner of town, and there wasn't a whole lot else going on there. All of a sudden, now we've got outdoor seating at Starbucks, and we've got outdoor seating at uh, 110 grill and we've got the, the the spoon down the plaza a little bit and we've got this very vibrant area of town I mean, you can just see it happen overnight uh, and I think it'll only continue to increase that energy in that area and um, you know I, one of my friends said hey you know pretty soon we can go on a pub crawl in Hopkinton okay that never existed in the past but that could happen now where people could walk from place to place so I think we all have to become more vigilant about the opportunities uh, for people to have one too many and then make some other errors in judgment and kind of snowball from there. Um, but I'd like us to be a discussion as we just, as the way we presented it uh, and, and not necessarily, I mean, maybe we have to take some, I don't know, but that's the board will make those decisions. But from my perspective anyway, I think we, try to, we all need to try and learn from this because the town is changing. The town is changing before our very eyes. You know, and my wife talks about it to, with me a lot. For eight years, I mean, the town's been evolving for 50 years, sure. But in the last eight years, up until two years ago, at least during the recession from 2007 to 2014, nothing happened in Hopkinton because the entire development world stopped. Everything stopped, right? That, that was what happened. And then we had all this pent up, you know, development coming and we had all this pent up energy and this great community with these great schools. And the recession started to ease a little bit. I'm not convinced everyone's back to where they were, but it's improving. And boom, legacy comes out of the ground, and this comes out of the ground, and the muse is going in, and the tennis club's going in, and there's this all over Hopkinton. There's all this activity. I think good stuff, but the town is changing, and we've got to manage that change and not let it manage us. That is my pet peeve in business, and my pet peeve in government is that 
we have to manage the process. The process cannot manage us. We have to manage the licenses. The licenses, the license holders can't manage the town. And I think that's the vein in which I think we have to have this discussion tonight. Anybody else? Um, well, first of all, I, I would agree that I hope, I hope something good can come out of this, um, that you know, everybody's kind of uh, learning, I guess, uh, learning new ways of doing things. I personally really appreciate the fact that, uh, Rosie, you and your husband have gone through in the business and um, done some introspection to see how you can change your processes uh, so that this won't happen again. Um, to uh, Mr. Herr's comment about uh, these inspections over the past decade, I, you know, I remember hearing chiefs come in and say that they did them, reporting that there were no violations. That always, that's an easy meeting for us to have and you know, it's, it's a good thing. Um, but in the last, I guess it's two and a half years now, maybe three years, we have had three instances where there have been violations involving liquor licenses, uh, three different businesses, and in each case, uh, it, the result was a suspension, a short suspension of those licenses. In each of those cases, it was a first offense uh, for the business. And in one of those cases, it was another business that uh, has been doing business in town for multiple decades. Uh, so I think that uh, my personal opinion is that it's the board's responsibility to at least go to the next step and to hold a public hearing uh, to consider uh, whatever possible actions as we move forward. And it may be, you know, no action and, and you know, continuing on and uh, hoping that everybody's learned a lesson or it may be, uh, you know, some other uh, more penalizing type of action. Uh, but I do think, in my opinion, it's the board's responsibility to move to the next step in this instant, in this instance, uh, just to have a, a, a level hand uh, with all of these licenses. Okay, anyone else? This is right. I'm new to this, so I'm, I'm learning through the process as well, um, but I, I did wanna say, you know, I think we all recognize Dynasty is a, is a fixture in this town. Um, they they have been here for years. Um, they're solid business members of the community. Um, this this family run operation. Every time you go in, it's it's Rosie or one of the family members. Um, they they we've had businesses come and go. Dynasty has been here, I think probably since that building was built. Um, so so you know we really recognize and appreciate the solid. Um, contributing members the dynasty is um, and that my initial observation in what mr. Nealon has said is is I am impressed that it, it is one thing to say oh we're sorry we're sorry we won't do it again you know we take this very seriously but the next level is taking concrete steps and you have laid out um, some very concrete steps that the establishment is trying to take now to prevent this from happening again. So I, I am impressed with that. Um, I would also mention that, you know, my understanding over the years is Dynasty has been an extreme, their bar is an extremely busy operation. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of uh, customers served and you know, I hope this hasn't happened in other times, but what I'm saying is we, we haven't seen this before. So in terms of uh, numbers of incidents, recognizing how much business they do, um, I, I would respect that. Um, but I do wanna mention that I, I'm pleased um, to see the concrete serious steps that the restaurant has already tried to take. Any other thoughts? Well, I've, I've known this business since its inception. Uh, I knew, I've known Rosie, um, her Aunt Jessie that ran it before, Tom and Judy, and I know that they have, um, they've been vigilant on like not being the stereotypical Chinese bar, Chinese food bar that you could go to before you were of age or 
last call, whatever, and fall in and then fall out. They've been very vigilant. I've seen them shut people off that were, uh, I don't know, if I were a bartender, I probably wouldn't, I'm not TIP certified, so I, I wouldn't know the signs, I guess, but uh, they have been vigilant and um, their clientele that they have there are actually almost like their security, where if someone went in and someone knew that they were underage, the customers would say, it's time to go. You're not, you, you can't order a beer here. You can't order a Singapore sling or whatever you're going to drink. So the clientele has a, I mean, the ownership has a very um, solid following by the clientele and repeat customers and repeat and repeat and repeat customers. Um, but I don't know if, like, I'm, I'm just one person. I, I don't uh, say I'm speaking for the board, but it, it's, uh, they have been here for 22 years and, um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know exactly what to say as far as moving to the next step, not moving to the next step. Um, but I would like to speak for their character and and how they've run their business for the last 22 years. Okay. Mr. Catino, anything? No, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm suffering from jet lag, but okay. so I'm, I'm a little slow. Mr. Right Catino's just returning to the United States. Um, Mr. Mr. Kamal. Um. Because earlier on you did ask the question um, whether the board has dealt with this issue before, I thought it might be appropriate for me to explain my understanding of why the compliance checks. The policy behind compliance checks is to educate the licensees on the risks associated with serving alcohol without checking the identity card. That's, that's why chiefs around the state undertake these uh, 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 compliance checks. And thus, if the, if the, if the, pep, if the policy behind these checks is education. The question therefore before the board is, based on what you are hearing now, do you feel that the discussion today accomplishes that goal? Or do you feel that additional discussion through a public hearing process meets the intent of these checks? Mr. Sestari also raises a very valid question in terms of the board maintaining consistency in how it deals with compliance issues. I thought it was important for me to at least explain the intent behind the checks and also restate the question before the board tonight within the context of my understanding of the policy behind the checks. Okay. Chief, do you concur with Mr. Kamalo's uh, assessment of the compliance checks done for educational purposes, or are they done to catch somebody? No, the whole, the whole idea uh, be, behind this, and uh, as it was in the uh, neighboring state of Rhode Island where I worked uh, prior, was the sole purpose was to gain compliance and educate the public the importance of that. A lot of times uh, they're done in a survey mode where you're just kind of collecting data and you, you don't even use that for. For, for, for licensing uh, uh, purposes. Um, you know, to address uh, Mr. Sestari, I, I, I certainly uh, uh, agree with his opinion, but I think the other incidents were incidents that the police got in, involved with through a call or an incident or a thing, thing of that. Uh, like Mr. Kamal was saying, this was put out there. First, we try to educate them and uh, let them know that these, these checks are coming, and it is a very, very important matter not to be to be uh, uh, serving alcohol to minors, so that's why we go out there and do these things. And our number one goal is, like Mr. Kamal said, is educate and to gain compliance to make sure it doesn't happen again, because that's what we're doing in this community. Police Department wants to work very closely, as I'm sure the, the, the board does, who oversees these licenses uh, to make people sure that they under, understand 
uh, the implications of, of, of their actions and make sure that they get everyone TIP certified and come to our educations, which is one thing I would, I would, I would bring up. They've been there in the past, but they, they, missed, they missed the last one. But it's something that you know, I think you know, should be required by the town to come and we host these uh, educations through, through our police department. That and, and and just one other thing, and I know there's discussion now, but I was just curious about bartenders being tip certified. But if a waitress is is going up to a table and taking an order, I think as well considered bartenders for service. Bartenders for sure, yeah. not all uh, service persons. Well, I, I would suggest that any staff that's going to be serving <coughs> alcohol and checking IDs should also be tip certified or not be allowed to do it as well. So, okay. Mr. Sister. Yeah, Mr. Chair, you know, first of all, I want to make it clear that I am appreciative of, of um, the dynasty and, and how long they've been in town. And um, I'd really like to focus on, on the good track record that they've had as opposed to, uh, you know, one incident here. Um, but I guess I'd also like to point out that we can look at this as an exercise, uh, more or less a training exercise where uh, it was in a controlled environment. Somebody went up, they asked for a beer, they shouldn't have gotten a beer. We know the person never drank the beer and saying, okay, this was all great. This is kind of classroom. You know, you know, you should learn a lesson now. Don't let this happen again. We can compare that to a separate incident where it's in an uncontrolled environment and people are before us because there was a real incident on the road and there was an accident and the person ended up on their front steps and they couldn't even sit up. Uh, and you know, that resulted in closure for you know, three days. But what's the next step? You know, what, if that, what if that accident on the street had resulted in injury or death? Um, is it, you know, now we have to ask ourselves, is it still a three day? Um, or is it uh, taking the license away because the result was more extreme? So it's, a, it's, it's relatively the same actions in that uh, they're violations of, of the terms by which we give them the license, um, but it's different extremes in the outcome of that action. So, you know, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, step up to the plate and say we need to, you know, run with this one all the way, but I just want to make everybody clear that, yeah, this, this is a, a learning experience and we can all sit here and be happy that uh, it's, it's been a controlled environment as we're thinking about what to do next. But let's keep in mind that the same action could have happened when it wasn't in a controlled environment. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Me. If I may, one. Sure, sure. Uh, the other thing, uh, what we've done in the uh, my prior agency, what we've done in the past too, is when someone did uh, serve during a sting, then they wouldn't be part of those regular checks. We'd actually step up compliance to to ensure, uh, well, with uh, maybe more one, maybe two or three, just to ensure that people and businesses have got the point. And that's something that uh, I would aim to do as well. If the compliance activity was stepped up, would that require additional action by this board at this time? Or is that just within the police chief's discretion? It's, it's all of the above. Um, the police chief could do it as part of his uh, routine work uh, based on what he's ob he has observed on the, uh, on the ground. Um, th that could also be done jointly with a decision by the board that may require the chief to do that. Would that decision have to take place in a public hearing? Again, for me, I think the if if the board is going to take that step, uh, it it may be appropriate then to do it in a public hearing. That would be my my advice. Again, the issue here for me being, given what happened in a controlled setting, what does the board believe is sufficient education for the licensee on the risks that are associated with serving alcohol without uh, asking for identification. Any good business that has a good brand, or any great business that has a great brand in a community, 
doesn't want to see this, doesn't want to have this discussion, frankly, I'm sure. So great business people, which I believe the folks at Dynasty who've been there a long time uh, are. Um, they have great food, thank you. Um, you know, try to avoid these types of situations because it doesn't help the brand. I mean, let's just look at it from a pure business perspective. This doesn't help the brand. A public hearing is not gonna help the brand. Um, and I wouldn't want to do anything to hurt the brand. I really don't want to do anything that's going to put the community at risk, however. That's, you know, the brand is a concern of mine, and I'm sure it's a major concern of the owners, but my major concern is the safety of the community. Um, from, from my perspective, uh, given that this is an education process, given that I don't recall ever having any issues with Dynasty in the past. Um, and given that the controlled environment didn't create a dangerous situation, whereas the other incidents that have come to us were dangerous situations, um, I'd be inclined to table it for now and let the chief do his job. I think when the chief does his job, which he knows what he can do to enhance his duties and responsibilities. Um, you know, we'll see what plays out. But uh, I say that, and I fiddle with my fingers a little bit here, because I'm the biggest pain in the backside when new applicants come into Hopkinton and sit out there and say, we'd like a license from the board, and everybody welcomes them to Hopkinton, and I say, hi, how you doing? If you ever do anything wrong, we're going to pull the license from you. And I come right out and say that, and I'm very blunt about it. Um, and some people have lectured me about that, you know, after the meeting's over. But that's how I feel. So I'm contradicting myself to some extent because we have a situation that's presented itself, and I'm not being the hardball that I present, you know, to the, uh, early on to the applicants that come before us. So uh, I don't want to be a hypocrite about it. But. Well, I mean, and, and, and being in your position and any of our positions, I'm sorry, I'm cutting off Mr. Catino. Oh, no, 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 it's but, right. but, but it's... It's easy to find yourself in a situation where you want to contradict yourself. I'm in the same position. I mean, hearing, hearing what they've done, I, have a, I do have a true appreciation for that. And, you know, there's, you know this, is, this is one of those 49 and a half, 50 and a half percent kind of, you know, uh, seesaws here where I'm saying, you know, I, I do trust that they're taking action right now. And I'm in the same position. I don't want to hurt their brand. At the same time, I don't want, I don't want people to be hurt in town, um, and so you know I can certainly I can certainly consider uh, either direction on this. Uh, you know I think that if we are moving forward, I don't want other businesses in town to think that, oh, you know the board of selectmen is inclined to give people you know one strike before they uh, before they come down. Uh, I want all the businesses to accept this mistake as everyone's strike. And after this, you know, we need to, we need to make sure everybody's complying very strictly. Mr. Catino. Yeah, well, the way I see it, it um, I, I was uh, agreeing with uh, Mrs. Wright, when they've already, if, it's, if we're talking about education, they've already implemented some, uh, some good strategies to try and eliminate it. But what I think that we could possibly add to it is to make sure that they all take the chief's course. If we're talking education and we want this thing to not happen, and if the chief can help out in any way is to make that, you know, we, we spoke about it before, to try and make something like that mandatory. Well, you know, as opposed to having that public hearing and doing the rest, let's just say if they've already implemented many, uh, many stop gaps right now, let's just throw this one in there and, uh, and just to make sure if we, if we can help it out. And to build on your point, when like the tennis club came in and one ten girl came in and, and everyone that's come in um, since I've been around doing coming to these meetings, which hasn't been that long, you have been that guy to say, listen, we're going to hammer you if you do something wrong. You're letting them know when they leave here, they're on notice. Um, and I'm not saying that the dynasty doesn't know that they're on notice, but when the, the tennis club that, that is just getting their liquor license now or, or the spoon or whomever, you say, listen, if one mistake, 
you're done, or you're, you know, we're going to come down hard on you. You've never had that conversation with the dynasty. Just to build on what you were saying, you know. So I don't, I don't find a, a, an air of hypo hypocrisy where we've never had that. Uh, now I, I think that that's probably a, a known entity that they're, that they, they know that we're going to come down hard on them. But so to alleviate a little of your concerns of hypocrisy, you've never had that. Listen, yeah. <laughs> Um, point out other ways you flip flopped. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. All right. So, what is the board inclined to do? I'm sensing there's a big table in front of us, and some people just want to throw it on the table. I'd like to make it an educational. Uh, make, make you know turn this into an, an educational, and, and let them know moving forward that. There's no wiggle room moving forward, and um, and go from there. However, I understand what everyone's thinking when I say that is consistency. I understand that, but I think that um, by their due diligence of, of of what they've done and what they're willing to do, um, I think that that will that satisfies me. But. Again, Can uh, Mr. Chair, I, I guess I would I would suggest if we're going to table it, we table it for a set period of time, uh, after which you know we make a determination either to move forward with uh, with a hearing or to dismiss the matter. Mr. Kamala, would that be an appropriate approach? I don't know. Um, I, I'm 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 simply thinking in terms of the. The timeliness of whatever action the board takes relative to when the violation occurred. Um, I'm sorry, relative to what? When the violation occurred. Okay. Yeah. This is right. With all due respect, I, I think the board should handle this tonight. I mean, if we table it, it's not like there's a whole lot that's going to change between now and then. Um, you know, I think the issue before us is do we take this to a public hearing or do we, as Mr. Tedstone has suggested, look at this as a real lessons learned education experience from an entity that has a long track record of, um, you know, a, a long and good reputation in the town. But I, I, I don't understand what the advantage is to just kicking the can down the road. So I guess my, my intent was to basically have that period of time be more or less a probationary period without putting a probationary period stamp on it. Uh, so that way that's not something that's, uh, uh, you know, on paper marring a record, but at the same time, uh, you know, if, if. But, but isn't the chief doing his job going forward in terms of compliance, basically the same as what you're describing? Because if it happens again, and it's it's a whole different conversation, right? Mm -hmm. Another check at any time. Yes. Exactly. We, I'm not going to tell the chief what to do because the chief does what the chief does. But he's got two ears and he's smiling, so I get it. He gets it, right? So the chief's going to do his job, and we'll see what happens. I think that's basically what yep. you're describing. It's fine. I think that covers what you're suggesting too. Sort of concerned. About. So, you know, I think the controlled environment here has helped this situation. But the controlled environment is one nanosecond of the operations that go on year round. So, all of our license holders and this particular license holder has to recognize that controlled environments aren't going to save you every time. It's those uncontrolled situations that, that that's when there's that's where the zero tolerance comes in. Somebody gets hammered and there's a big fight in there, you know, and the bartender kept feeding them whiskey or tequila because it was somebody's birthday and they drank 21 shots in 21 minutes because that's what they do and blah, blah, blah. That's, there's no discussion there. You know, we don't have the discussion, we just go to the hearing. Um, so I think the controlled environment helps us all learn uh, and I guess I'm making myself feel a little bit better here, but in an uncontrolled environment where there's a blatant mistake and somebody's hammered or someone gets in a wreck or someone goes to a packing and does their thing and it's wrong, whatever, that's when we have zero tolerance. I guess 
I'm making myself feel better more than anything else. Now you can tell them anything else. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, that's what I worry about. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We all have if, young kids. If that somehow are... this situation, let's say it wasn't an operation, uh, I don't know if you like the term sting operation or whatever, whatever it was. If it wasn't a compliance operation and it was a minor and the minor got drunk, that's a whole different discussion. Right, because not only do we have a learning experience going on, we've got a serious safety issue with that individual and whatever happened after that individual left the place. So, it, yeah, I, I mean, I, I understand. I understand, and that's easy to put that. And I know, and I know, I'm contradicting myself. You know, here I am saying, you know, let's let's try to make this as easy on the business as we can. But at the same time, you know. In, in your logic, you're only looking at the outcome and saying, because everything was okay, then we can take this as a learning experience. But if something bad happened, you know, then that's when we're gonna go to penalty phase. So everything was okay this time, it was a learning experience. Um, and I understand, you know, in a learning environment, you know, you don't wanna, you know, slap the kid's wrist if they're not learning. Um, or if they get it wrong, I should say. But next time you teach the lesson, if they get it wrong, is it still a learning experience? You know, so, I, and I don't believe this is going to happen, but, you know, if Chief sends someone in next month and, you know, they get served again, you know, same scenario, Chief is still sending someone in. It's a learning, it's a learning environment. Um, but now that's two times in a row that they've gotten it wrong. Um, you know, or, or going to another business. So that's, that's I guess, my point. Okay. No, I understand what you're saying. Mrs. Wright, you were... I just want to comment that, you know, I, I know I'm telling you how to run your business, but I've been to establishments. They have a sign right up there, no ID, no service, no questions. And there have been, you know, actually funny situations where people almost took it as a compliment because they were carded when they were obviously over, you know, over the age. Um, but there are establishments that just run it that way and they just don't enter into judgment calls at all. And, you know, that may be something to really think about going forward that you don't even, you don't even take that risk. Um. Okay. Uh, given the hour and I think the discussion that we've had uh, my sense is the board is willing to table this topic. We don't need to vote to necessarily table the topic, do we, Mr. Kamalo? Do you want, we wouldn't vote to take no action, we just table it. We don't, do we vote to table something? My understanding in terms of the, the procedure is that there was an attempt to make a motion. I don't know if that motion was seconded. If the motion is not seconded, and there's no alternate motion, then the result is that the board is taking no action unless there's a specific request to continue the was discussion. Is there an attempt to make a motion that I missed? Well, well even if there's no motion. That's, that's the tabling. So tabling is no action. Tabling isn't just putting it off to deal with it later. Tabling, it's, it's done. It, it's done. It's okay. quote done. And, and I guess one last comment I would make, and, and I try to believe there's always a method to my madness. Um, my kids don't always agree with that, but when I talked about nothing happened in the past in this situation, the controlled environment didn't let anything happen, there was a message in that about what will happen in the future. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh -huh. I was explaining what happened in the past, <laughs> but everybody that would listen to me, hopefully, would understand that that's, if that repeats to the future, game over. You know what I'm saying? You're very profound. Just, just, <laughs> just to clarify my method and my madness. Chief. Uh, just to uh, ensure that the public knows too, uh, regardless of this hearing, I will ensure that my detective uh, meets with the owners and we go over some strategies to improve on how they can uh, gain compliance and we'll all do, we'll do our due diligence with that and make sure they understand and uh, regularly attend, attend meetings. Thank Mr. Neal, sorry. Just one, one more question for the chief. Um, chief, if the board goes ahead tonight with no action, uh, how, do, how do you feel about that? Good question. Well, you know, my, my uh, sole purpose is to keep the, the community as safe as possible. And there's different ways of looking at it. You have the enforcement, 
uh, part of it. You have the educational part of it. I certainly uh, have been a big proponent for the educational part of it, uh, whether it comes to you know, many different things as far as violations of the law and things of that nature, whether it's traffic offenses and things like that. Uh, education is one of, you know, you have the three E's, the engineering, uh, uh, the, the education, and the enforcement of it. And the education part of it has certainly gone a long way, especially with seat belts and things of that nature. So it, it you know, both ways have their ups and downs and both can be effective, um, considering that we have not had any other uh, incidents with them I certainly think this is a positive step, and like I said before, this is all, I'm, uh, the, the, our main focus is to get compliance, so all of our, uh, our vendors in the city uh, are TIP certified, and uh, you know, would never think of being brought back here again. You know, if you look at it as a team effort, everybody, if we're all working together on the same page to ensure we're gonna keep our kids safe, and uh, you know, look out for people behind the wheel and drunk driving and things of that nature. Um, if we all work together and we stay educated together, uh, I've seen it in the past, even in a, a city with many, many uh, bars and uh, alcohol establishments, they all feel part of it and they wanna be part of that community and, they, and the last thing they wanna do is be embarrassed and have their, their, their name up in front of the board again. So I, I've seen it work and uh, uh, hopefully it will in this case. So would you, would you feel that there's any degradation of the board's support in your efforts if there's no action here tonight? No, absolutely not. I think going the educational piece is in line with what chiefs uh, across the state are, are trying to do. All right, thank you. Mr. Neal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I don't want to take up much more time, but I just want to say that certainly appreciate the discussion. Even this is an education for my clients however i do want to again represent and assure the board that even before this evening in my discussions with them leading up to tonight since this incident they're internally on notice themselves with their business in terms of the privilege it is rather than the right to hold this license they're now on public notice as a result of this discussion tonight uh, and that's only a good thing in a, in a further uh, thing that they'll use and, and capitalize on and, and helping them run an even better business uh, than, than they run now. But uh, again, I just wanted to tell the board that on their behalf, they appreciate your consideration uh, and uh, accept every comment made tonight in the vein that it's given, which is you know, public safety, reputation of the town, but also respect and consideration for a, a longstanding good business partner in town as well. So. Okay. So hearing no motions, I think it's time to move on. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you very much. Uh, good luck. Be well. Thanks. Thanks. Talk some trash. Okay, we go now to item number 10. Item number 10 uh, on the agenda. And let me just, let's backtrack here, everybody, so we're all good and we know what's going on. One and two are done. Three's done, four, five, six is done, which is our appointments. Seven, so seven is done, eight's done, nine is done, 10 is solid waste recycling, uh, 11 is done, so we're almost there. Okay, trash, let's talk trash. Um, I got a note to me here a few minutes ago that uh, we, we're not sure that the volume or the sound is working across the community tonight for this meeting. Is that true? That's true. So, That's why Jim left. He's trying to see if he can fix it. It's being recorded here with the sound. Okay, so this meeting can be played back and people can hear it, and people that are concerned about these different issues we've talked about tonight can hear the discussion in the meeting, and in particular with respect to trash. Um, they'll be able to hear it on HCAM. Thanks, correct? Okay. All right, thank H you. H. Kim thinks it's the school committee, apparently. H. Kim school committee, solid waste recycling contract. Okay, the school committee is <laughs> going to make the decision for us on the trash. <laughs> <laughs> we are adjourned and out of here. <laughs> okay. Let's vote on a budget now. Next step. <laughs> um, <laughs> just to kind of go back and sort of remind everybody once they get to listen to this. Uh, that we've been talking about trash in Hopkinton uh, for several months now. Um, 
in the last couple of months since the election, we've uh, had a public forum where folks could call into HCAM and discuss the proposal put forth by town hall. Um, we've discussed it at a meeting a couple of times. We laid out a process for how we would handle it going forward. And then we scheduled a public hearing where uh, residents could come in here and be heard uh, specific to the trash issue and recycling issue. Um, and now, uh, if we stick with the guideline that we set forth a couple weeks ago, uh, before a couple of our members went on vacation and traveled for business, tonight we would sort of get their input having watched the video and then discuss sort of where we are and what we want to do uh, with respect to the town, to the contract. Specific to the signing of the contract itself, the board does not sign this contract. The chair doesn't sign the contract. The town manager signs the contract. That's correct, Mr. Kamala, right? That is correct. Uh, you know, if we got into the sort of letter of the law here, uh, we advise, the town manager decides, okay? So he's an astute guy, and he'll listen to advice pretty well, not always, but pretty well. And so he'll take the advice of the board. But if the town manager is like, okay, I'm fed up, and signs the contract, the contract's a legal valid document. Okay, so just so we understand sort of the role, as the policy board, we set the policy direction and advise. But we don't always make every detailed decision. And you know, while it's a big contract and it's a big sort of uh, third rail at times in town, it's not necessarily our sole decision here uh, with respect to when we enter a contract for trash services. Okay, uh, that said, we're here, our two colleagues, we're not here for the public hearing, so if I could, I'd, st I'd like to start with one of the two of you, whoever wants to go first, and give us your opinions on what you thought you heard and saw at that hearing uh, that you watched on HCAM News. Oh. Yeah, I, I just uh, I just wanted to uh, make sure that um, the people that opt out uh, that uh, that aren't getting the containers um, can have um, the uh, containers that they've been using for the past few years that that have solid construction that have the hooks in it can be grandfathered into the uh, the program. Because uh, you know, it, it, there's all this discussion of, of you know getting getting one of the ones from Harvey, but if this if the ones that they have been using that that the automated picks up and dumps that they can they can continue using them, because I, I didn't want this to become a um, uh, a contest over over you know a, a you know the a family that has uh, empty nesters or newlyweds that live in a two bedroom condo. That, that can squeeze down and get have one small little container of trash and just recycling all tied up and then compared to uh, you know some of the houses in Cranberry Cove or something that may have six or seven bedrooms and five six seven kids and they're paying uh, 15 20 25 thousand dollars a year in taxes and and you know trying to fit into that same size uh, model I just want to make sure that we're, we're fair, fair to everybody. And if people want to opt out; they can use the containers that they have been using, and um, that, uh, that that not to. We all want everybody to recycle, but uh, I don't want to put it to make people uh, have to bend over backwards. When I think about my uh, my 96-year-old mother when she used to be tying up the the newspapers with the uh, with twine. And then every once in a while, I'll throw a pizza box in there. And I remember years ago when we had the inspector go by, and they put the sticker on it. They wouldn't pick it up, and she couldn't understand why they wouldn't take the pizza box. But I said, "Mom, but there's oil on it. They don't take pizza boxes." And she was all confused. So I want to make sure that 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 we're not putting too much too much pressure on people to to um, recycle, but do the best they can. Okay, uh, Mr. Kamala, do you want to address Mr. Catino's points before we go to Mr. Sestari? Through the chair, my understanding is that the program as discussed so far, especially taking into account the comments that we received, will allow flexibility with regard to people continuing to use their cuts if they so choose. 
what we also heard from the public is that most of the residents are using cuts that are flimsy and may not withstand the automation. Uh, and the requirement therefore was if three months down the road a family believes that they need a different cut, will they still be able to call EL Harvey and receive the new cuts? And the answer is yes. Okay. Mr. Sestari. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I think that it's great that we've had this conversation over the last several months. I think the conversation's gone on long enough. Um, you know, when, when Mr. Kamalo first came out with the proposal, there were a couple of, you know, issues and tweaks, but I think that for the most part, people were in relative agreement. We were moving in the right direction. Um, along the way, it seemed like there's been a lot of, you know, yelling over unanimous agreement. Uh, you know, single stream is a good thing. I don't think anybody's going to argue that. And, you know, that's, but that's something that I know I've gotten, you know, emails about, you know, we got to go with single stream. What are you guys, crazy? <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, yeah, that's great, you know. Um, you know, in terms of, in terms of getting the, the carts from E.L. Harvey, uh, initially I had a concern because the plan was to have an RFID chip in those, uh, my concern being longer term, I don't want us to be set up where it's easy to start turning at, turning us into a pay-as-you-throw kind of town. Uh, I think our taxes are high enough, and for us to start tipping the needle over and saying, you know what, you're going to have to uh, pay by the by the weight of what you throw out now. Um, I you know I don't think that that's appropriate for for a community like Hopkinton. Um, and then we started getting into the, you know, okay, some people have sturdy carts that they don't want to get rid of. Uh, other people, you know, may think that the carts that were going to be delivered were too big. And Mr. Kamalo and, and the Harveys have gone out of their way to accommodate all of these different flavors of comments. And on top of that, with all of this flexibility, it's the best priced deal. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I really, don't, I really don't see a need for us to continue the conversation. Um, and I guess with that, I'll just end my comments so that we can hopefully put this in the rear view mirror for a few years. Okay. Members that were at the public hearing. I, uh, I got a phone call yesterday from Jim Harvey. And Jim asked to, he was curious why he was never invited to come and speak here. And he would love to have the opportunity to come and speak and, and, and um, kind of give you the highs and lows of, of his product and answer some of the questions directly rather than, uh, rather than have it be disseminated through second or third hands. So I sent that. You know, when I got that request, I sent that to Mr. Kamalo, and, and uh, the only thing I have to say is that he, he would love to come and speak um, at the next meeting, but um, I don't know. Apparently, that's not going to go on, so whatever. So I'm, well, but he raises a good point. Who from Harvey's has been leading this discussion with the town? The project manager on E.L. Harvey's side is... B.J. Harvey. Is that Ben's son? That's Ben's son, yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. And he has been in direct contact with Mr. Westerling and... Yes, and, and myself. Uh, and, and also, um, I think for the record, um, the, the sentiment regarding having Mr or a Mr. Mr. Harvey, Jim himself, or a representative from uh, E.L. Harvey has been previously shared with the Harveys. Well, according has been to shared what? We did share that, that, that with the Harveys previously. Oh, with the Harveys. Yes. Okay, um, okay. Any, anything else? Well, according to what I, and I'm not 
saying one's right and one's wrong, but according to what I spoke with Jim yesterday, uh, he had not been invited to any of these meetings. And the meeting that he was invited to tonight, uh, the people that were, uh, that would be qualified to speak, one was in Peru at, a, uh, at some type of a convention or something like that, and one was in Las Vegas. So uh, on 24 hours, he was not able to get someone to come up here and speak, but he would have loved to have been afforded the opportunity to do so. Um, so it sounds to me like Jim's got an internal problem <laughs> and that his team yeah. is not telling him what's going on in Hopkinton. Yeah. And yeah. That's absolutely. I, that's a good point, but Jim's got to, I'm sure he's, he'll figure that piece out. I mean, if we, if we go ahead and encourage Mr. Kamala to proceed, the first person yep. I'd want to come see is Jim Harvey come in and explain how they're going to roll it out. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. I, I don't know if we need him to do what we're doing now, but if we're going to roll it out, because they've made a lot of promises yep. that it's going to be in a written contract, I think Jim should come to your point, and I think he should say hello. Okay. Mrs. Wright. Well, when this first came to us, it was concerned that it not be that it needed to be vetted with the town. I think it's been thoroughly vetted. I think it's been vetted to death. <laughs> I've attended the public hearing. I've attended the heard the HCAM thing with Mr. Westerling. I've gotten and printed out and read all of these public comments. Um, I, I am sorry if there's been some communication gap, perhaps with the Harveys that we weren't aware of. But I, I would like to move this along. And um, I feel if there were some major sticking point for the town, then maybe it would be time to continue the discussion even further and bring in uh, a representative of the Harveys to fill in the gaps. But right now, I really don't think there are any gaps. And um, I have read and heard every public comment out there. I've been tremendously impressed that every concern has been addressed by the Harveys. Um, the company has been remarkably flexible and willing to work with the town to meet the needs of individual citizens. And I, I just don't think you could ask for more. I can't, I can't identify one concern where the answer has been no, we can't do that. So I don't know how much you're, more you could ask. Um, I, I, I think it's a, a very positive solution, and I think that they have made every effort to address <coughs> adequately every public concern. So I would like to see us um, instruct Mr. Kamala to move forward with this new plan. I don't see any downsides. So, so I'm in the business of selling you know, large capital assets, and when you're in the sales process and you're trying to sort of steer a conversation and a client and an organization in a direction that's going to help everybody work together and partner up to do some business. Um, you're in the sales role, you tend to find ways to build on common ground and build, you know, get, find common interests, common points, and build from there and sort of help that relationship grow. The Harveys have done that in this case to shift to a new single stream recycling and trash uh, service for the town of Hopkinton. And in every instance where we've asked Mr. Westerling, who's been our primary contact with them, uh, and Mr. Kamala perhaps to some extent, uh, the, they have always affirmed that, yes, that's going to happen. Yes, that's going to be in the contract. I guess my point is, long-winded, selling's great. I do it for a living. What's in the contract is of paramount importance. And what's in the contract has to be honored. So here's the bully in me coming out, right? Okay, thanks for all the great well wishes, and they've done everything we've asked them to do. Now it's time to prove it and put it in the contract. And what we need our team to do is for Mr. Kamal, Mr. Westerling, and Ms. Lazarus to make sure that happens. Mr. Kamal, are you confident that you can make that happen with the team, the Hopkinton team and the Harvey team? I believe, based on the current discussions, as well as uh, prior conversations with the prior contracts uh, with the EL Harvey's, that the town has an opportunity to include in the, con in the contract the provisions that are advantageous to this community. 
and the ones that we discussed through this process, meaning they can opt out if they don't want to do it. They can get a smaller can if they don't want to do that. They can go with single stream and automatic for recycling, and they can use their own barrel for trash. I mean, was, we had a lot of different things on the table, and there was, we were yesed along the way. Yes. In the sales process, we call that yesing someone to death, right? We were yesed to death, and I fully support the Harveys, and I think they run a wonderful business, but you know, we need to make sure that we don't just make all these promises and then not deliver the product. So as long as you're confident and Mr. Westerling confident and, and Elaine's confident that we can make this happen day in and day out for the residents, I'm good. So you're confident. Confident. But I don't Elaine, are you confident? Elaine's confident. I don't know. Confident doesn't cut it. We, if, they were, if we were told yeses and noes, and we were said yeses, yes means yes. Okay. So confident isn't a guarantee. Well, he's confident that the yeses are going to be there. All right. In the contract. All right. In the contract. All right. I'm confident that if they're not, you'll be spoken to. <laughs> okay. Can we make a motion? Yeah. So, are we, everybody said what they want to say. We have a couple people here tonight. I'm not sure if they're here specific to trash or just observing their government at work. Does anybody have any other comments about trash? Hearing none. Okay. Um, Mr. Kamal. The specific request is that the Board of Selectmen advise the town manager to proceed <clears throat> with the DPWC implementation of automated capside and single stream recycling collection in the town's trash program. Mr. Chairman, I move that the board give direction to the town manager as stated. Second. Does that work, Mr. Kamal? Yes. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. Mr. Kamal, please proceed with your discussions and get a contract that includes all the yeses. Okay. Um, Next on the agenda. Do we have any board invites that have come in? Nope. Yeah, there was a Metro. Tulsa will help. I'm sorry? Tulsa will help news today. Okay, yeah, there's a regional opportunity to participate in the forum, okay? And um, liaison assignment, we've got the liaison assignments down. Any liaison reports? We can go around the table now. Mr. Sestari. Yes. Mrs. Wright. Nothing right now. Mr. Katina. I've been out of the country, sorry. No excuse. Mr. Tedstown. All good? All good. Okay, so no liaison, I have none to, oh. Uh, I did have a Metro West Regional Transit Authority meeting. Uh, but nothing of consequence to report. Okay. Except through you, Mr. Chair. I did get, I did receive confirmation from the town manager in Milford that he will share the route information for the new bus route that will be extended uh, to the community of Milford by the Metro West Regional Transit yeah, Authority. Yes, so when we have that, we're gonna make that public, but Milford is joining the MLT and the RTA, so we're gonna add more uh, opportunities for people to move around. Mr. Chair, I did go to um, um, open space I was voted as a liaison for that, and I went to one of those meetings, but there was nothing that would okay. that went on there. Excellent. Thank you. Mr. Kamal, town manager's report. Nothing further to report at this point, Mr. Chair. Does Lazarus anything to report? Okay. Future board agenda items. Mr. Sestari. Nothing. Mrs. Wright. Not tonight. Mr. Catino. Not here tonight. Mr. Tedstone. Negative. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, all. Thank you.